A gorgeous, lazy September afternoon, a Saturday here in Seattle, looking at Lake Washington into the east, the Cascade Mountain Range. Ready for football. Hello again, everybody. I'm Kevin Calabro, along with Sonny Six Killer, is the 108th home opener for the Huskies. The season opened last week, of course, in the Wasatch Mountain Range with a Husky win over BYU. The Huskies impressive 42 to 20 in the win. Big win, Kevin. Anytime you can win against a team like BYU on the road, especially by 22 points, there's reasons for it. Number one reason, they ran the football. The Huskies were very successful. Rashawn Sheehy here back from an injury riddle 96 running down the field and that's what the coaches love to see the ground game set up Brock Heward 18 of 23 285 yards three TDs Sonny. well Brock Heward gets some time because of that running game to step up in the pocket big strong kid big arm accurate arm Freddie Coleman hauling in for a touchdown meantime San Diego State opened with a home win on Friday against Navy 45 to 31 and it was done through the air Kevin McKechnie the quarterback was sensational absolutely we're not sure who's going to play today bad ankle Kevin McKechnie but he looks like he may start if he cannot go Michael Smith number 14 the transfer from the University of Washington will be taking his first snap ever in Division One football McKechnie had four TDs 371 yards through the air many of them to Oz Hakeem Oz Hakeem is a kid that everybody wanted out of high school he went to San Diego State so he could showcase his skills. And right here, you can see him running in the open field. Hopefully, the UW defense won't see much of that today. Joining us today on the broadcast, roaming the sidelines, is Tom Glasgow. Tom, welcome to the broadcast. Kevin, good to be here. It's going to be fun watching these clubs get after each other up close and personal. And especially the Husky defense going against the San Diego State offense. Last week, the Huskies really got after BYU. Those guys up front putting a lot of pressure on the Cougar quarterbacks. And that allowed that UW secondary to cash in and take advantage of some opportunities. For example, Tony Parrish getting the pick last week. This week, however, the Huskies should be facing, at least on paper, a much better offensive line in what the Aztecs will put on the field. Kevin, back to you. Well, Tom, the last time these two teams met was way back in 1982. Get in the Wayback Machine with Sherman and Peabody because it was a 46-25 knockdown drag out battle between these two teams as the Huskies scored 28 points in the final 20 minutes of that game. Steve Pallor, Tim Cowan combined for four touchdowns on the afternoon as the Huskies won. So it'll be the Huskies in San Diego State. The action coming up next. The Aztecs and the Huskies. The Huskies ranked number three in the country, and the Aztecs coming off a rousing win last Friday night over Navy. The redshirt freshman to kick off to Joe Jarzinka of the Huskies. And it's a high end over and taken at the 12 by Jerome Payton. Has an opening up the middle. He's going to scoop to the 40, and he has just tripped up just over the 40 yard line. They'll spot it at the 41. Excellent field position for the Huskies. Great way to start the ball game, Kevin. Jerome Payton, an excellent punt returner and kickoff return man, right there finding the seam. Great job by the special teams to start the game. Brock Ewart, the Husky quarterback, 6'5 and 220, out of Puyallup High School, a sophomore, 18 of 23, 285 yards and three touchdowns through the air last weekend against BYU. Ewart with two receivers wide right. Sheehy, the lone man in the backfield, and a split into the left side. Ewart back to throw, looking left flat. Has a man open. Reception made just over the 45 yard line. And lunging forward for some extra yardage is Freddie Coleman, the senior out of Tyler, Texas. The Washington front line Dalen, Olson, Kruitz, Cadlitz, and Coates. It'll be Rashawn Sheehy, George Kieho. Cleland, Coleman, and Payton. And a flag on the play. The preliminary indication is illegal participation. Illegal participation, 12 men on the field, on the defense at 15 yards from the previous spot. The first down. Penalty assessed to Ted Toller, San Diego State Aztecs. One too many men on the field, 15 yard penalty. Coach Jim Lambright of the Huskies. He has been a part of, as a player, assistant coach or coach of now 364 Husky football games. Wow, well, that's a lot of ball games, Kevin. Two receivers to the right, Sonny, and in motion. A lot of motion on the Husky offense. 
They give you a lot of looks. Hewitt again gunning left side, shaking left, moving right, trying to lean forward for some extra yardage. It's Jerome Payton with a nice catch again on the left side. And apparently a fumble and recovery made by the Aztecs. The pass complete to Jerome Payton, then the ball fumbled after contact made, and Andy Osborne came up with the big skin. Well, last time he audible to this play, this time you see Rashawn Sheehy coming out right there, number one for the Huskies, looking to block someone, and Jerome Payton, great job out there by number 60 of the Aztecs, Andy Osborne. Osborne with the strip, and then the recovery of the fumble, and now the Aztecs have their first possession of the afternoon, down at their 42-yard line. McKechnie, the quarterback. Handoff up the middle and leaning forward before tackled at about the 45 yard line was Justin Watson, the senior out of Pasadena, California. San Diego State, they will like to run, they like to run the football up the middle, set up their passing attack as well. That time they came out with two tight ends, which means they're just going to try and power it down the field. San Diego just had 81 rushing yards in the win over Navy last weekend. Couple of backs and Jonas Lewis and Justin Watson that can get the job done, however, when called upon, but not this time. Watson is stacked up behind his line of scrimmage. Great job in there by Chris Campbell for the Huskies. Kevin McKechnie, you know, has been banged up, Kevin, all week. He was on crutches earlier in the week. It kind of saved him a little bit and hoping that he could start the day against the Huskies. McKechnie's out of Sacramento, California. Went to Christian Brothers High School. He appeared in three games last year. He has two receivers in tandem wide to the right, one on the left, and the lone man in the backfield. A technique to throw. Looking to the right side. He's got a tight end open. Over there on the right side to make the catch with Chad Flick, the senior out of Vista, California. A pickup of a few, but not enough for the first down. And so the Aztecs will surrender the football. They'll punt it away to the Huskies. Marcus Great Harrison with a stop. Great coverage by Marcus Harrison. You know, he's a big kid as well. He's a sophomore for the Huskies, and he's got great speed to be able to get out in the flat and cover the tight end. Don Copeland back to punt for the Aztecs, and Jerome Payton is the lone deep man for the Huskies. This punt will be served up from Copeland's 37 yard line. He took a look after delivering the high wobbler down to about the 14 yard line flags on both ends of the field back near the punter and back over near the receiver in Husky territory. No score yet just underway from Husky Stadium in Seattle Washington. 37 yard punt but again flags litter the field. Next weekend, the Huskies welcome in the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And Sonny, the one question that was most asked this week of the Husky coaching staff, will your kids look past the Aztecs and San Diego State? I really don't think so. Coming in a big win last week at BYU, a home opener here for the 97 season. And uh, if you can't get up for a ball game here in Husky Stadium on your own turf, uh, then you've got some problems. Personal foul, roughing a kicker against the defense. Fair catch interference, the two yard belt, offset the penalties, fourth down repeated. It's a wash, fourth down repeated, which means Copeland will come back to punt the football. Coach Lambright getting a real read on this call. See if we can see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that looks a little, like a little cheap shot. Jerome Payton going for the fair catch signal right here. You've got to give him room. And you can see right there the Aztec player was like chest to chest with him. Big break for the Huskies on that play, Kevin. That was Marcus Hairston who put the forearms right across the collar of Copeland. It sent him to the field well after that football had been delivered off the left foot. Payton again deep. Copeland to punt. Low snap. And he put that one off the side of the foot. Jerome's going to take it at the 15 yard line works out to the sideline near side is at the 25 to 30 and then run out of bounds at about the 36 yard line so the Huskies will have their second possession of the afternoon. No score yet first quarter from the banks of Lace, Washington and Seattle we'll be back with more in a moment. 
No score yet at Husky Stadium along with Sonny Six Killer Kevin Calabro 12 11 left here in this first period of action. This will be the second possession of the afternoon for the Huskies a completed pass in his own end from Muir to Payton turned into an opportunity for San Diego State when Jerome was stripped of the ball by the linebacker Andy Osborne Osborne recovered the fumble but San Diego State unable to move it against the Husky defense kind of a shaky start today Kevin you had we have about three penalties and about three minutes of play so far one big turnover Osborne joined by Joe Jackson and Julius with Christian at the linebacker spot five man front for the San Diego State Aztecs you are back to throw seven step drop throws a tight spiral going for the bundle and it is caught by Fred Coleman Coleman with the juggling reception is fouled at about the 18 yard line. Fred Coleman had a sensational afternoon at BYU with a couple of touchdown receptions, and that senior comes up with another beauty from Ewart. Freddie Coleman is playing with a great amount of confidence. You can get a good look here at Brock Ewart. He knew exactly where he was going to go all the way. Freddie Coleman for the Huskies with a big cap. Great. Great catch. That is a 51 yard hookup between the two. Coleman had five catches, 65 yards, and the two TDs last weekend. Remember, the DB he's going against, Eric Lewis, is only a 5'7 junior, number 29. Coleman himself stands 6'1 and 190 and has some hops. Here is yours to hand off to the right side. Sheehy with blocking, breaks the tackle, and then manages to lean forward. He is chopped down around the ankles at about the 11 yard line. Jason Moore over there to make the stop, but not before a gain by Sheehy to the right side. Defensively for San Diego State, young Dorsey Chance and Via Milla. It'll be Jackson Osborne and McChristian, the linebackers, and Lewis, Moore, Curtis, and Higgins. In the defensive backfield. That was the first run of the afternoon for the Husky offense. Coming in the ball game, they're going to be putting it up in the air. Twin backs in the Husky backfield. Man in motion is Reed to the left side. The handoff is Sheehy looking left side, darts in, goes outside, gets a block, and tried to work off the block of Andre Dessischer on the left side. He went the inside route and got up to just shy of the first down. They'll mark the ball, Sonny, at about the eight yard line. Good job of running the football. You know, Andre Dessischer, wide receiver out there trying to lay a block. Good job by the Aztec defense, number 24, Jason Moore, coming up to contain Rashawn Sheehy. Jason Moore with another tackle from his spot back there to strong safety third and one now for the Huskies no score yet ball marked at the Aztec eight here is the handoff and again we'll go to Sheehy the workhorse leans forward and now we've got Reed down there with some Aztec defenders exchanging shoves and pushes and some greetings for this Saturday afternoon here in Seattle Washington tough running up in the middle right there you see the offensive line for the Huskies only troops right there jumping through trying to get to that middle linebacker Osborne and on this particular play it looked to me like George Kieho the fullback for the Huskies number 25 was heading towards the outside and the play was meant to go inside Cam Cleveland as well there to kind of twist the body in that pile and get a little forward momentum going for a Husky first down first and goal down for the Washington Huskies and the ball marked about the seven yard line of the San Diego State Aztecs. And <laughs> pulling out has been Catlett. Big Ben had that caboose moving. Well, I tell you, he looked quick on that play. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Catlett's the junior from La Canada, Dead California. Ball starts on the offense, five yards. Look on the left side here, Kevin, number 70. Young Ben Cadlitz. He goes, well, if he can go in motion, I'm going too. <laughs> <laughs> Had a good game last week versus BYU. Well, again, it sets up a situation now with a five yard penalty where the Huskies now can stretch the San Diego State defense. And you have a situation now with a, a first and 12 opportunity. Could be a good opportunity for Ewart to pass. That's what he's going to do. He's got a man post left. And it could be a touchdown. Payton makes the catch left side. Leads forward and a touchdown, Washington. They're on top 6-0. 
I tell you, it is so difficult to stay with Jerome Payton one in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He is just so quick and so fast. And with the arm of Brock Hewitt getting that ball out there, you'll see the frozen rope going out here to the left side from Brock Hewitt. And Jerome Payton one-on-one -on -one out there. James Hagen, 17, and a great job by Jerome Payton to stretch out and get that ball over the line. On to kick now is Randy Jones. Ryan Chicoin, the holder. Here's the snap. And the hold the kick it is up. And it is good. The Huskies. No, it is no good. Apparently, the kick was pushed to the left. It is a good extra point. It's 7 0. Huskies will be back. Randy Jones on the kick now for the Huskies, the sophomore from Spokane. Back to receive. Oz Hakeem, the speedster. Here's the kick. They're going to go the opposite direction from Hakeem. Catch is made by Marty Graham. And Graham is collared at his own 22 yard line, and he is dragged down hard to the turf. Just like Reggie Davis. San Diego State's offense led by Kevin McKechnie the quarterback and they have a big offensive line they have a returning quartet that has been together over the last three years led by the preseason All-American Kyle Turley at a tackle 300 plus pounds here's the handoff to the right hand side they go over toward Turley's direction behind his block and getting maybe a yard or two as Jonas Lewis. You see the line of Klein, Milano, Nielsen, Whitman, and Turley. Watson, Hatchflick, Hakeem, and Johnson, the backs. One lineman that's not playing, probably we'll see some time today, is Ephraim Salam, who uh, the Husky coaching staff thinks very highly of. Second nine for the Aztecs. The Huskies lead 7 0. The Aztecs from their own 23. McKechnie back to throw. Five step drop, looks over the middle. He's got a man slamming across it to Keen. Stumbles to the 50, spins away from two tacklers, and then is dropped down over there by Lester Towns in Husky territory. Hakeem coming in the ball game is a speedster. We we featured him last week. He had 172 yards in reception. Today, Jermaine Smith. Just got turned a little bit there. Akeem is so quick, he runs a sub 4 4 40. You can see why right there. 31 yard hookup, first and 10 now for the Aztecs, trailing 7 up. Akeem is wide to the near side. McKechnie back to throw. Looks right, swivels left, little swing pass left side for the back coming out of the backfield. It's Jonas Lewis. He double teamed and spun down at the 36 yard line of the Huskies. Nigel Burton with the stop for Washington. Campbell, Issa, and Wiggs on the front line with Shorak, Harrison Towns, and Jensen, the linebackers. They'll show an eight man front a lot of times, though. Burton, Perry, Smith, and Miller in the backfield. Now, Washington's defense, Sonny, we were talking about it in the pregame. They're going to relax a little bit on the pass rush, as I understand. Well, they're going to try and shut down the run, which they've done a pretty good job of right here. But on that last play, the Aztecs ran a little swing pass out to Jonas Lewis. And if you remember correctly, last week versus BYU, they had some success running little screen plays to the flat. Lewis with the carry and Wiggs with the stop on this last play. Suki Wiggs again last week against BYU had a good game getting penetration and right there stepping, keeping the pace up that he had last week. Third down and two for the Aztecs at the Husky 36. McKechnie the handoff it's Lewis leaning sideways and forward and very possibly the first down it looks like he might have gotten it Aztec first down Lester Towns with a stop on Lewis thus far the Aztecs have mixed up the play call they've done an excellent job and I can see now at the left tackle they do have Ephraim Shalom in there number 66 which means they moved Turley over to the strong side tackle position and added blocking ability. Turley 6'6 and 305 and Salam 6'7 and 290. 
McKechnie back to throw in a first down situation. Had a man over the middle. It's a keep. Spin, reverse pivot inside the 10-yard line before he is literally hauled down from behind by Jermaine Smith. Akeem makes the catch and it makes it just a brilliant move to spin away from the tackler and lean forward for an extra three or four yards. From the Husky side of the offense, you see Jerome Payton with the quickness and the speed and the moves. On this side, Oz Akeem right here, absolutely playing a soft zone right there. It appeared to me and Jermaine Smith not be able to close quick enough to get him, but he did come back and make the stop. That's a little bit too much room for a guy of that ability. The team from Fairfax High School in Los Angeles. Aztecs trail 7 nothing. The ball resting at the Husky 9. McKechnie again on a first down situation. A handoff to Lewis. Stop deep in his own backfield by Smith. Smith couldn't wrap him up, but he hit Lewis sufficiently to force him to his knees at around the 11 yard line. Great job by Chris Campbell, number 35, right here getting penetration. He's a young guy that's uh, about 6'2, 240, but he's very strong. And one of the things he was in high school, Kevin, was a sprinter. And you see him sprint to that location and make the play. Very tough kid here from the local Seattle area, Linwood High School. This is where the Huskies have to get really tough down here with the passing ability of McKechnie. Second and 13. Kevin McKechnie in under center. McKechnie to throw on a flag and a whistle and the play holder. Tell you one thing, McKechnie hasn't shown any signs of a bad ankle so far. He's been able to get the quick drops and get the pass away. Dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Five yards. Ball start on the Aztecs. Still, second down. Still be second down. And the ball now will be marked for Ted Tolner and company back at the 18 yard line. Well, Ted Tolner so far is 0 and 2 when he's been a head coach at Husky Stadium, so. He's got his work cut out for him today. He did have the two wins down there in Southern California with USC, where he coached for four years. Here's McKechnie. Tight end to the right. Two receivers right side. Little swing pass over the middle. It's a keep. Slanting in. Makes the catch. Wriggling his way through the defense. The ball is punched loose from behind. Loose in the end zone. Goes off the Husky helmet. Out of the end zone. And it will be Husky football. Jermaine Smith diving for the ball actually created a header situation there as it went right off the cap and out of the end zone. Little discussion by the officials on the field right now, but again, McKechnie getting the ball away. Very good call. The little quick underneath routes have been very successful against the Huskies in the past. And Ozakim clearly was a fumble. Good job from behind by a Husky defender to punch it out. Tony Parrish with that left arm. Watch him right there. Force that ball loose. Tony Parrish was always around a fumble last year, either causing them or recovering them, and there he is again. And it appeared to me that Kyle Turley from behind the play might have kicked the ball into the end zone in his burden way. Big break for the Huskies again. Boy, there's no mistaking though about. Oz Akeem right there, number three, Kevin. That kid can't play football. Uh, he is the truth. 7 nothing score, Huskies. They'll have the ball now at their own one-yard line. The Huskies lead at 7 nothing with 5.38 remaining in the opening period of play. Wide receiver to the left side is Payton. Reed is the H-back on the right, and Sheehy is the lone man in the backfield he'll take the hand off trying to work his way to about the two yard line that's where his progress was halted before he was pushed back to the goal line a gain of a yard it'll be second down and eight the Aztecs will bunch it up along that line of scrimmage move some folks around get about eight people up near the line of scrimmage and right here it's kind of a stalemate you look at Jason Moore 24 so far, it looks like he's been blanketing uh, Rashawn Sheehy, kind of eyeballing wherever he goes. He's done a very good job of containing him. Same formation, face on left side. Read the H-back, stacked up on the right. Ewart back to throw, looking over the middle. A little sideline route, throws a tight spiral, but a little bit too far ahead of the intended receiver, Jerome Payton. One thing these guys have done this summer is work very hard together on timing routes. Jerome Payton on that route was going to do a down and come a slightly out right here. You'll see him right there break out. 
the DB actually forced him to go a little bit wider than he really wanted to. Otherwise, he'd have been in a position to make the catch. Good job by James Haggins, number 17. Third down and eight for the Huskies. You were three of four thus far this afternoon. And a touchdown pass to Jerome Payton. Man in motion, read right to left. You hand off Sheehy, working over to the left side and the block of Tony Coates. But the Aztecs swarm around that block and they bring Sheehy down to the three yard line and the Huskies will have to punt it away. This will be a difficult situation now. For Sean O'Loughlin, the punter, as he has moved all the way back to the back of his end zone. Oh, they need a good one here from Sean. The Huskies were last in the Pac-10 last year in net punting yardage. Eric Lewis, the shifty defensive back, 5-7, is the man lined up at midfield to cover the punt. O'Loughlin gets off the beauty. This one's going to push Lewis back to his 41-yard line. Last the football, picks it up, and he's hauled down at the 35. Sensational punt from Sean O'Loughlin, and great coverage by the Huskies. Boy, that makes all the defensive coaches a sigh of relief right there, Kevin. Tremendous job. 59-yard punt from O'Loughlin moves the Aztecs into their own territory. Huskies lead 7-0. Sunday six killer Kevin Calabro Husky Stadium in Seattle Washington a gorgeous afternoon for football Jim Lambright Huskies on top seven nothing and they have moved the Aztecs back to their 37 yard line where they start first and 10 after a 57 yard boot from Sean O'Loughlin McKechnie the quarterback of the Aztecs deep drop forced out of the pocket throwing over there on the right side he's got guess who it's Hakeem and he simply juggled the ball coverage there provided by Tony Parrish incomplete pass as Hakeem couldn't handle that floater near the sideline in front of the Husky bench excellent throw by McKechnie on the run put it right on the money you see here little well good blocking up front double team and Jason Chorak 46 the big sack leader but Oz Hakeem just took his eyes off for a moment and that's what happened well there's no doubt about who they're throwing the ball to today Kevin Oz Hakeem, he's been the man. Second and ten. McKechnie, the handoff left side, and stumbling forward for pickup, maybe the yard, is Justin Watson before the big man Chris Campbell makes the stop. Campbell, very active last weekend in the win over BYU with a couple of sacks. Also in on the play was Lester Towns, number 17. Chris Campbell's doing an excellent job against 87. Mike Hatch of the Aztecs, he's uh, Getting the leverage, and as I mentioned, you see from his size there, 240, 6'2. He's got extremely good quickness. He's getting leverage and getting the uh, advantage over the Mike Cat. Hakeem lines up left side, and Jesus Reyes, number five, is in the slot out on the right side in tandem. McKechnie back to throw, looking right, forced out of the pocket, and a whistle, and a penalty. And the Aztecs might have been moving again before the snap. The Aztecs have a tough schedule ahead of them with Rose. Dead ball fall. Delay the game on the offense. Delay a game on the Aztecs. Aztecs on the road against Wisconsin next weekend. A road game at Air Force and then at Arizona. Ted Toner likes to move the ball up and down the field, too. He's coached a many good quarterback in college. Uh, even at BYU, speaking of BYU, he, uh, Jim McMahon was there when he was coaching the QBs. Toner was an offensive coordinator with the Chargers, the Rams, he was with Buffalo and Mark Levy. They, at times, will use a no huddle offense as they have a very, very number of occasions with the Bills. McKechnie back to throw right side, swings a bullet out there in the right flat. Along the far sideline, up near the first down, at about the 47-yard line, was Taj Johnson. Johnson had a big afternoon last weekend. Caught a couple of touchdown passes. Great timing right here. McKechnie and Taj Johnson. Excellent deep comeback route, one of the toughest ones to defend because the receiver actually goes about 18 yards downfield. The defensive back believes he's going long. 
Johnson's first reception of the afternoon. He had six last weekend for 163 yards and actually at one TD, a 78 yard strike. Well, the Aztecs do not get to the first down marker and they will be forced again to punt it away. The left footer, Copeland, with a wobbler. This ball down around the 26 takes a husky bounce. And how, look at that. 15 yards on that hop. Finally, the Aztecs down that scrambling football at the near hash market around the 39. So a net of 14 on the punt for Copeland. Must have been a ballada. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to pooch it to keep it away from Jerome Payton, who is a very, very serious kick returner and uh, can get it down there like last week he had a big return not for a touchdown but a long one. Huskies first and ten ball at their own thirty nine. You were back to throw looking deep he's got faith on the tight spot will make the catch and he stumbles forward again deep into Aztec territory. The reception made at about the 15 before he skips forward to the 10. They'll mark him back at the 15, and that is a 45-yard hookup before Eric Lewis makes the stop. Jerome Payton just on a go route right there, turns on the juices. Brock looks him off to the left side and comes back. He knows he's going to Jerome Payton. Eric Lewis, Aztecs, just over the top of his noggin ahead. Look at that speed right there. Eric Lewis let him close, too close to him right there. Tough to catch up to a sprinter of Payton's speed. The Huskies leading 7 0 with a minute 43 left in the first quarter play. This is sure and Coleman wide to the left side. She is the lone man in the back. Here. Ball resting in about the 16 of the Aztecs. Handoff she slamming left to right, leaning forward, Cleveland leading the blocking, and Sonny wriggles his way to about the eight yard line. Good, good job there by the offensive line on this one. Uh, you look at the center right here, Owen Cruz, 77, jumping across again, getting that middle linebacker. And when you get to that middle linebacker like that, take his feet out, you've got a good game. Be a middle with a stop for the Aztecs. Owen Cruz is doing an excellent job of by-stepping the down lineman, Dan Dorsey, or I think it was Daryl Jones on that last play to get to number 60, the middle linebacker. That's a sure wide left, Coleman wide right, two men in the backfield, man in motion is Davis. Here's the handoff to Sheehy, and boy, did the Aztecs sniff that one out. Sheehy no sooner got the football than he was met chest high and dropped at his own 14-yard line, well behind the line of scrimmage. Well, sometimes you just have the wrong play called, and it's a great job by the defense to get in there. Right there, nobody laid a hand on him, and he was able to come come free. Giamel is a big guy, lanky too, 6'4", 230 pounds, but uh, he's got quickness. At a Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles, my buddy Marcus Johnson from Crenshaw High School. So Marcus is rooting for him, I'm sure. Near side, it's Coleman. Man in motion, Sheehy. Twin receivers left side, Hewitt back to throw and play. Play halted. Huskies lead 7-0 with 11 seconds remaining. Here in this first quarter of play next weekend here at Husky Stadium, the much awaited matchup with Nebraska. On the offense, five yards, still third down. Ball start on Jim Lambright's Huskies. And of course, that game against Nebraska weekend and uh, next weekend will mean very little for the Huskies unless they get the job done today against the Aztecs. Well, you take them one at a time, Kevin. And as we talked about, I don't think the Huskies have overlooked San Diego State in any manner. They saw how they played against Navy with big plays. Oz Akeem going deep a couple times. So I'm pretty sure that the Huskies are focused today. Time runs out in the first quarter. We'll switch ends here at Husky Stadium. The Huskies hold the upper hand after one complete in Seattle. Seven nothing. Washington leading the San Diego State Aztecs. A bright and brilliant September afternoon in Seattle, Washington, with Sonny Sixkiller, Kevin Calabro. We have one in the books here at Husky Stadium, and Washington leads the Aztecs of San Diego State seven nothing. The Husky set up third and 13. The ball on the Aztecs 17 yard line. Ewart back to throw. Drop to the 25. Hard hit. Makes the hit the pass over the middle. It is Coleman slanting between the hash marks for the first down. And to about the three of San Diego State. Ewart just hung right in there, Sonny, beautifully and delivered the goods. It was a big rush by number 94, Antoine Young. 
Last week he had a sack. Well, the last game they played against Navy, he came up with a sack. You see on the blind side, tough to see. That just means you're a big, strong kid to be able to get the ball off to a guy like Coleman there. It wasn't a pretty pass, but it was accurate. The Huskies this year, five for seven in the red zone. Five scores, five touchdowns, and seven opportunities inside their opponent 20-yard line, including this afternoon. Here's the handoff to Sheehy. Tries to muscle his way forward. He stopped. He hands off, flips it back to Mueller. He works his way ahead and lunges to about the one-yard line. Well, she was stonewalled. <laughs> he turned, and instead of trying to scoot around the end, there was Hewitt wide open beneath him. I'm, I'm sure the Husky coaching staff doesn't like to see too many of these plays with Brock Hewitt running the ball towards the goal line, but really kind of heads up here. They're really stacking it up inside in there. And Rashawn Sheehy with a little lateral pass to Brock Hewitt. Husky second down and two. Diejo's the up back. Sheehy will get the handoff from Muir behind the block. Dive forward. Ball pride. Free fumble. It looks like the Aztecs are on. Well, the ground can't cause a fumble, Kevin. He was airborne. It appeared to me when he lost the football. But let's take a look. And uh, now the officials are going to confirm with one another. And it looks like the Huskies are going to maintain possession of the football. For Sean Shee, he's very athletic, as uh, most Husky fans know. Right there, nothing open, yep. and definitely the ground caused that fumble. Good call. The, the player was ruled down. Therefore, there's no fumble by rule. Seems to me the Huskies have been trying to punch it up the middle. Haven't had a lot of success, as evidenced by this play. The Aztecs are getting great penetration down low. And a good job right there. To, well, actually, not a good job. Rashawn Sheehy is very lucky that he didn't cough it up. Third down, the ball at the half yard mark for you. In the backs of the eye, the man in motion is Davis. Here's the handoff to Sheehy. Tried to go off to the left side this time. His initial lunge forward was stopped. He continued to muscle forward. Then he was pushed back. And that ball is going to be marked out about the one. The Aztecs holding up front. Doing an outstanding job up front, and everybody from that Aztec team. Sometimes the coaching staff is, uh, when you're offensive minded, is that, hey, we're we're big enough, we're strong enough, we have the line that's getting all the press, we're going to pound it in there. If we can't make a yard, we can't make anything. And obviously they didn't make anything on that play. Huskies are going to have to kick down the field goal, and this will be at about the nine yard line. Randy Jones is the kicker for the Huskies. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick. It is up. And it is good. So Washington scores to make it 10 0, but not before the Aztecs pick up a little momentum defensively, halting the Huskies at their own one yard line. We'll be right back. Well, the Huskies settle for a field goal to cap an eight play 59 yard drive in four minutes and 26 seconds. Jones with an 18 yard field goal. That was after the Aztecs hold on a third and one from about the half yard mark of their own territory. Well, here's the play again. The coaching staff feeling they have confidence and the power to get in to the end zone running the football. But there's a guy in there, number 91, Tony Mata Utia, who they put in there, did not start the ball game, but he's getting great penetration down low and taking that up front blocking out of the whole scheme of things. Got to be a great confidence builder for San Diego State Kevin. It's just a tremendous job down there in the goal line. Defensively they've done an admirable job. Remember on the Huskies first possession of the afternoon. Linebacker Andy Osborne forced to fumble and recover the fumble. The Aztecs offensively have shown a number of looks. They've been able to move the ball satisfactorily on the ground and Oz Hakeem obviously has proven to be a real jitterbug that's already given the Huskies some headaches. Right side is Randy Jones kicking the field goal. Here's Jones. Boots this one diagonally off to the far hash mark and running up making the reception scooting up the middle Oz Hakeem jitterbugging behind is blocking up to about the 41 yard line. Uh, 
This time they try that little short pooch kick down the middle to try and get coverage from the special teams. But again, Oz Hakeem there to get the football coming in the ball game. The coaches didn't want him to get the ball on the kickoff, but even on the shorter kick, he was able to get there. Kevin McKechnie, the quarterback for the Aztecs. The twin receivers up here to the near side. Hands off in the backfield, and being caught in the backfield is Jonas Lewis. Lewis is thrown for about a three-yard loss. Marcus Hairston is there. Aztecs haven't been able to run the ball real effectively today. Jeremiah Farms, number four. Marcus Harrison, 27. Good speed at inside linebacker position. Is able to cut him off. Lewis is listed at 5'9 and 195. A sophomore from Cherry Valley, California. And he only had 24 reps last year. He's the lone man in the backfield. Aztecs on second and 13. McKechnie deep drop, looking, scrambles out of the pocket, forced out. After him is Hairston, but he is back ended over there, making the stop for the Huskies is Josh Smith. Good pursuit by Josh Smith. Good, good pressure that time, Kevin, but the real story is we normally hear when the quarterback sits back there and he looks and looks and looks, can't find anybody open because it's good coverage downfield by the defensive backs. No one was open. Third and ten now for the Aztecs. The Huskies leading 10 nothing, with 11:05 left in the second quarter. To the near side is Todd Johnson for the Aztecs. Hakeem wide out to the left. Here's McKechnie back to throw. Steps up in the pocket, dumps it off to the right flat. With it is Lewis. Scrambles outside and rolled off his feet. I can't believe the Aztecs didn't get called for a holding call on Jerry Jensen on the far side of the field. Jensen for the Huskies had his blitz time just perfectly and all of a sudden he ends up on the ground. Aztecs will have to punt it away and they've got a man down. Tom Glasgow's on the sidelines working for us this afternoon. Kevin, an injury update regarding the Huskies and their center Olin Krutz on that last Husky offensive possession, second down. He injured his right ankle. They simply retaped over the shoe. Krutz says he is all right, should return on this next series. Meantime, the Aztecs are attending to Jonas Lewis, who was shaken up on that play. Aztecs will have to punt. Copeland from his own 41 yard line moves a high one taken by Payton at the 10, and he swarmed and dropped at his nine. He secures possession for the Huskies, and that's where they start with 10 38 remaining here in the first half, leading the Husky Stadium 10 to nothing. The Huskies. At the 10 4 mark, scored their first touchdown of the afternoon. Six plays, 64 yards. Time of possession, 207, a 12 yard hookup. Here's a handoff right side, gaining some ground. It is Coleman up to about the 29 yard line. Actually, it was Maurice Shaw, number 32, not 22. Shaw, who had a couple of rushing plunges for touchdowns last weekend. Finally, Sonny. Gained some ground up the middle. Husky's been pounding the middle all afternoon, but it's uh, Shaw who finally makes a gain of 19. Well, it's the power offense. You got 51. Brad Hutt coming in to take care of the middle linebacker, Osborne. And Maurice Shaw right here showing a little speed, a little juking, getting downfield. That's a big game. The best running play of the day for the Huskies. The Aztecs attend to one of their men down on the field. Daryl Jones, number 99, Kevin. See him some spot duty in there, the big junior. As you can tell from that, he's probably near 300 pounds, and yes, he is, 305. Jones from Compton, California, says that's not going to keep me out of this game. <laughs> I mean, that's that's uh, that's nothing a kid from Compton can't handle. Now you don't want to get out of those TV games, Kev. You got to stay in there. <laughs> that's right. 10 nothing score the Huskies. 10 19 left, second quarter. Brock Ewart as Reed as the H back lined up on the outside of Tony Coates on the left side. And the man in motion is Fred Coleman. They'll join Pape on the left side. Ewart stumbles as he takes the snap and goes right to the field. Looks like his center may have did a drop step on Brock Ewart's right foot. Take a look in there, right. Yeah, it looked like maybe just the turf knocked him down. 
you know, those big linemen back down there in the in the trenches, Gavin, you got Second down, and Hutt, yards to go for the Benji Olsen. After all, 25. Bruce is back in at center, 6'4", 290 junior, Honolulu, Hawaii. Second down, 14 for the Huskies. Hewitt, quick drop, looks right side. Buzzes one out there, but it's low and away and incomplete. And the intended receiver out there was Mike Reed. That's a tough completion angle right there. Mike Reed absolutely going to look like straight down the line of scrimmage to the far side of the field. Coach Lamb right there, probably not real happy with that one. And we'd like to get some momentum going with that offense again after being stuffed on the goal line on the last possession. Third and 14 now for the Washington Huskies. And a whistle before the Huskies had even gotten to the line of scrimmage. Washington will call a timeout. They lead the San Diego State Aztecs here in the second period in Seattle, 10 to nothing. The Washington Huskies lead the San Diego State Aztecs 10 nothing with 926 left here in the second quarter of play from Husky Stadium. You're back to throw now third and 14. Looking deep to Payton, and a man fronting him denies the football, but clearly held out there was <laughs> Jerome Payton. The man in the coverage for San Diego State was James Higgins, and he had a whole heaping full of Jerome Payton wrapped up in his fist. He had the jersey. He just got caught up in the action there. There's no denying that he made contact with Jerome Payton. Jerome just trying to get back into his route, and what happened? James Haggins had taken away the inside route. He didn't expect Jerome to come back to him. San Diego State's doing a good job defensively. It's a tough call right there, Mr. Jones. Interference on the defense. Be 15 yards. Previous spot. Automatic first down. Looked like Gerald Jones wrenched his knee a little bit. Penalty on the Aztecs results in an automatic first down for Washington. And Ted Toner, thinking his defense had the Huskies bottled up third and 14, a little upset. San Diego State penalties, five for 55 yards. Usually in college football, it's the team that makes the fewer mistakes that will win the football game or at least have the upper hand. 9-19 left in the second period. The Huskies lead 10-0. Last week, Kevin, against our two weeks ago against Navy the five penalties accounted for uh, excuse me five first downs and penalties. You were back to throw quick flip over the middle. The ball was caught but then it was deflected and knocked down. They're going to rule it incomplete. Cam Cleland from his tight end position had a couple of hands on it but a real nice stop over there from the diminutive defensive back that Jason Moore. That's a tough coverage assignment for more on big Cam Cleveland. Well, Cam is big and normally he has pretty sure hands. But Jason Moore with perfect timing right there to knock it out. Beautiful shot by Moore is 5'11 and 180. Cleveland 6'4, 275. Second down and 10 for the Huskies. The ball resting at their own 40 yard line. They lead 10 0. Big man in motion by Reed. Ewart hands off right side behind the block of Reed. It is she. He breaks back. Stumbles forward and tumbles to about the 46 yard line, but a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. And it's holding Washington. Good look at Rashawn Sheehy right there. Play designed to look like go up that in the off tackle. Rashawn going outside and coming back to where the original hole was planned to be and picking up a few yards. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat the down. Rashawn Sheehy from Bakersfield, California. 12 carries and 171 yards last weekend. That's an average of 14.3 per carry. And he had a couple of TDs. He's been unable to break a big one here this afternoon. He had two of them last weekend of 65 and 75 yards. 10 nothing Huskies. So it's second and 21 to go for Washington. You're back to throw. Looking over to the right sideline. Gets rid of it before he took a foul. Densashore makes the catch. Gathers it into the chest. That's going to be shy of the first down by about four yards. But a big pickup there. 46 yard line is where they will mark it in Husky territory. And Ewart courageously again takes a real lick 
right in the chest before he got rid of the football. Well, Andre Dessenscher, being a sprint champion, it still takes time to get that far downfield. Great pressure in there. At number 40, Charles Gatlin, but Brock Hewitt didn't get happy feet. He stuck with the pattern and then powered that ball out for Andre. Pretty good coverage out there, too, Kevin. Just a perfect pass. Third and five of the Huskies. Man in motion is Reed. Sheehy, the back. It's Hewitt to throw. The ball knocked down at the line of scrimmage by one of the down linemen, or very possibly a linebacker. Jackson is celebrating the linebacker. He apparently had a hand on it. And so, again, the Huskies are stopped by that scrappy Aztec defense. Five yards shy of the first down. Sean O'Loughlin will be back in punt formation in his own 30-yard line. Eric Lewis is the man back to receive for the Aztecs. Low snap, get it in by McLaughlin. O'Loughlin, the ball is squibbed off his foot, but it takes a fortuitous bounce, rolling down to the Aztec 20-yard line. And there's another flag down on the play. 35-yard punt when it's all said and done. I don't blame you, Ted. It's a little frustrating. Coach, I, I really, he was facing me when I went to block him. <laughs> <laughs> Sixth penalty on San Diego State. Illegal block in the back. The opposed scrimmage. The enforcement spot will be the end of the kick. Half the distance to the goal. The first down. Now that'll move the Aztecs back half the distance to the goal, so they will mark it at the nine yard line. McKechnie the quarterback from Sacramento California the senior rolls back flings to Hakeem on the right flank Hakeem leans forward and I mean he powers through a couple of tacklers leaning forward about the 21 yard line as, as Hakeem he showed great strength there 5'11 175 he was able to push forward and take a couple of tacklers with him. Well, look at this move down there. A lot of room that Mel Miller has given Oz Hakeem. Looked like about eight, nine yards. That's way too much. Good job that time by McKechnie to get rid of the football because number 40, Jerry Jensen, really whacked him just as he let go. Nigel Burton teamed with Miller to make the stop. Here's McKechnie to throw now. First and ten. Drops, throws a high one, arcing up into the hands of Tony Parrish. Flag down on the play. Parrish upended at the 40-yard line of San Diego State. But a flag on that play. Could have been Jermaine Smith with a little push off over there, Kevin. Getting a little separation between him and the receiver. Boy, when McKechnie let that go, he wished he could just draw it back because it looked like he just lost the handle on the football. He arced a high duck up there. Well, usually when you see a shoulder pad sticking out like that, it may be a holding call. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty clear that Paris just yanked that jersey of Hakeem. Again, though, the Huskies did get pressure. Looked like Jabari Issa in there knocking McKechnie down. Jermaine Smith not letting him get by him to turn on the torches. Right there, a little grab. I mean, if you're going to grab him, grab him low. Don't grab him up there where the shoulder pads can stick out. Holding on the defense. It'll be a 10 yards, be a first down. First down for the Aztecs. The penalty called on Jermaine Smith. Smith that time, unlike in previous situations, went up and actually gave Hakeem a chuck near the line of scrimmage. Which we hadn't seen a lot of, you know, with the double tight end formation the Aztecs are showing the Huskies today. That means they have enough people to hopefully block that attacking scheme that the Huskies like to employ. 10 nothing Huskies, but the Aztecs first and 10 at their own 31. McKechnie delay handoff in the backfield and moving forward for another Aztec first down to about the 42 yard line is Tyrone Evans, his first carry of the afternoon. Tyrone Evans, a high school teammate of Oz Akeem. This guy can flat burn it, Kevin. He he had a good spring this last year for San Diego State and really hasn't had enough carries this fall. But a good play with a passing attack is to run the draw play and use that speed and get up in the middle. 
656 left in the second period and the Aztecs first and ten and operating at their own 41 yard line McKechnie fake the handoff play action goes up top over the middle that's a free ball up for grabs and the nearest receiver was wearing husky gold and purple and down there running under it was Jermaine Miller and along with the Tony Parrish neither one able to catch up with that football thrown by McKechnie. Not quite sure where McKechnie was throwing that. You had a receiver on the far side running a post pattern and one running an under pattern to the near corner and he threw right between them. He split the upright. Mel Miller and Parrish down there. So McKechnie is faced with a second and ten. Two receivers wide left, one right. Hard rush and he is brought down. Great job right there. Suki Wicks with the First real pressure and the first sack of the afternoon on McKechnie. He just blew through the middle there. Suki Wish, the big senior from O'Day High School in Seattle. Watch right in the middle, right between the left guard spot. Just blew by him. Loss of 10 yards. Suki Wiggs, the red shirt in 93, part of that crew. Senior this year, 6'4, 280 pounds. Third down and 20 now for the Aztecs. Clock running, six minutes remaining in the first half. Huskies lead 10 0. Receivers in tandem left side, a wide out on the right. Here's McKechnie. Floats a pass out of the left flank. A little slow developing screen play that's going to go for nothing. Again, maybe a three yards on the play, and so the Aztecs will have to kick it away. Lester Towns puts the stop on Tyrone Evans. Ted Toner still yelling the encouragement to his Aztecs, who have played brilliantly here in the first half. That time, the Huskies got the upper hand with that big sack and some tough plays. Copeland has averaged just under 32 yards per punt. Joe Jarzinka. Back to receive for the Huskies at his own 25. Copeland gets under this one, and it's a high spiral and a beautiful kick. And it's going to be caught by Jarzinka at his 15. Scrambles free down the left side, getting to the sideline. Jarzinka has men ahead. He's at the 50, trying to cut back 40. Nearly stumbles, oh. and at about the 36, he is dropped down. <laughs> Joe Jarzinka saw every bit of that near sideline here at Husky Stadium. He had great downfield blocking, Sonny. I tell you. The fans here, you can tell by that crowd shot, they love this little guy. Joe Zarzinka, number 21, will step in for Jerome Payton. He has a big heart, you can tell right there. A lot of guts to catch that football. And good maneuverability right there. Great, great job downfield. And you see, the guy wanted to block the man, but he said, no, I can't hit him from behind. And little Joe did it on his own. Jai Zinka with exquisite balance. 5'7, 165. Man, he is low to the turf. You've really got to get down low to take him off his feet. So Joe has gotten the Huskies into excellent field position at the near hash mark, the 35 yard line, and a timeout is called. A 50 yard return on a 49 yard punt by Jarzinka has the Huskies in great shape, leading 10 0 with 440 left in the first half in Seattle. Beautiful day on the lake, Lake Washington, here in Seattle, Husky Stadium, with a, just a gorgeous view looking back to the east of the Cascade Mountains and Lake Washington. Another full house, 77,000 plus at Husky Stadium. Sheehy with the fake reverse goes right side and took a shot right on the hat and has dropped down at the Aztec 33 yard line a gain of four. Antonio Santos with a stop for the Aztecs. Aztecs are playing a lot of different faces on that other side of the line. Good fake right there. Rashawn Sheehy, tremendous job by the Aztecs to cut down the sideline. He had to move back inside, nothing there. Good pursuit angles by the defense, and maybe he should have handed off to Fred Coleman on that one. 4.15 left, clock running, and a whistle. And Aztecs will call a timeout. Rashawn Sheehy has had some difficulty on the ground. The Aztecs defense has been very stingy. Sheehy has been held in 10 carries to 20 yards. 
Well, that's quite a contrast to last weekend when he was nearly unstoppable. He had the big, big gains of 65 and 75 yards, the third and fourth most the longest carries that he has had in his career. Along with Sonny Six Killer, Kevin Calabro at Husky Stadium in Seattle, Washington, 10 0. The Huskies lead the Aztecs. 4-12 remaining in the opening stanza. The Huskies next weekend will welcome in the Nebraska Cornhuskers, while the Aztecs will continue their sojourn on the road. <laughs> A tough one, too, Kevin. Yep. At Wisconsin to meet the Badgers, then at Air Force, and then at Arizona. They've been a very, very successful program over the last couple of years, compiling 16 wins at the Aztecs under Ted Tolman. Husky football, second and six year at the quarterback. Brock fake handoff, play action, looking right side. He's got a man open, the completion, and then the big hit. They're going to rule it incomplete. And what a shot out there again, delivered by those diminutive defensive backs. That's Eric Lewis. He's throwing every bit of 5'7 and 155 right at Jerome Payton. But the one thing Brock Hewitt did right here is he threw behind Jerome Payton, letting Eric Lewis, 29, come up and make the big hit. I'm sure Jerome will say, hey, Brock, lead me to the sideline, will you please? Lewis, the coach's son. His dad is Sherman Lewis, the offensive coordinator at Green Bay. Hopefully the next head coach in the NFL as well. He deserves it. A try at that. Hewitt's going to check it to line. On third and six, and handoff to Sheehy. Delay handoff. He's going to work forward, but all down just over the line of scrimmage. Boy, Antonio Santos again steps up into the void. Joe Toypala there as well for Ridgecrest, California, the junior up front. Doing a good job. The Huskies are without Benji Olsen in the last few series has not been in the ball game. You got Brad Hutt uh, who transferred from Air Force 51 and young Ben Catlitz. Now Jones now will look for the field goal and the ball at the Aztec 37 yard line to snap the hold the kick to Lowen rises toward the goal post. And Jones pulled it slightly to the left and it is not good. 321 left in the first half. The Huskies leading 10 to nothing. Everything has to be right for these place kicks to be perfect and you look right there. Looked like he may have slipped a little but it's hard to tell. You know kickers have such a different psyche anyway Kevin you know one little slight thing will throw them off a little bit. <laughs> now Jones is somewhat untested he appeared in four games last year with no field goal attempts last year and he was over two last weekend against BYU. McKechnie is the quarterback he's got wide outs everywhere throws over the middle the tip pass might have been caught by an Aztec. They're going to rule that ball, I believe, incomplete at the 47-yard line. Lester Towns leaps high into the air to tip the ball. And it was ruled incomplete. As the Aztec receiver trapped the ball on the turf. McKechnie just trying to lay it out there. And Lester Towns doing an excellent job of getting back in coverage to take away that area. One thing a linebacker's got to do is when they're going to throw the ball and you're supposed to be back there about 10 yards, you better get there or those things will be big completion. Jesus Reyes, the intended receiver. McKechnie now with a handoff. And maneuvering out of the backfield is Tyrone Evans. Say that was a gain of three on the play, so it's third and seven for the Aztecs with 2:55 left, and the clock stops now with a timeout called by the Huskies. Ten to nothing, the count. Ted Toner and San Diego State came in here ready to play. The good job, Claude Gilbert, the defensive coordinator for San Diego State, has been around for a long, long time and put together a good game plan so far in the ball game. Stopping that running attack, Kevin. That's really for the Huskies. Last week they were throwing, they were running. Kevin McKechnie was throwing two weeks ago and he's had some success today but absolutely nothing rushing by the San Diego State they only have three yards rushing at this point. But to their credit they continue to pound the line there a little bit just to kind of free themselves up for the passing game be a little less predictable trips to the left side now for the Aztecs 
third and seven for McKechnie. The ball resting at his own 32. McKechnie back to throw. Hard rush slings one over the middle. That ball's going to be knocked down. Intercepted. Jensen with the interception at the 45-yard line. Man, he laid that body out in midair and hauled the ball in with two hands right off the fingertip to the chest. Secured possession and a big stop for the Huskies. They'll get it back with 2.49 left in the half. Well, in the last play, we talked about Lester Towns getting back in coverage and deflecting the football. This time, the whip linebacker, the weak side, Jerry Jensen, diving back. That is a great effort right there, Kevin. Sell his body, see him dropping back, hanging right where that zone should be. Good scouting report by the Husky coaching staff to let him know where to be. Hewitt fakes a handoff, throws up in the middle, Cam Cleveland, the receiver, and he makes the catch, tumbles down to the 16 yard line of the Aztecs. With 2.42 remaining, the clock stops as they move the chains, and so the Huskies quickly take advantage on a 28 yard hookup from Hewitt to Cleveland. Might as well go for it quick. You get a big turnover, and a lot of teams like to do that. A lot of teams like to go for the big strike. That was a big target with a big reception. Cam Cleveland, the big horse from Cedro Woolley, Washington. I love that town. That's a great town. That's a destination resort kind of town. You were back to throw. Out on the right side, little swing pass. And over there to make the catch, Jerome Payton. Jerome leans forward to about the nine yard line. Second and four for the Huskies. Jerome and Julius McChristian out there having a few words, but again, it's just that little quick step drop, little timing route, spot pattern. Come in there, pick up what you can. Almost had the hook and ladder set up there, Kevin. You see the running back coming out? Jerome now wide out to the right. Fred Coleman wide to the left. Jerzink is the, uh, the H back in motion with Sheehy the lone man in the backfield. Hewitt back to throw. Post pattern. Freddy's there. Makes the catch. Touchdown, Washington. 16 0 Washington. James Higgins was the man in coverage, but Fred Coleman got behind him, headed toward the near pylon. Very similar to a play we saw last week. He, Joe Jarzika, 21, in the picture right there, taking the safety out of the play. And Freddie Coleman beating Higgins right there to the corner. Again, though, a perfect pass by Brock Heward. Good protection up front by the offensive line. We saw Benji Olsen in on that play. Jones adds the extra point of the Huskies on top 17 nothing. So they quickly capitalize on the Jensen interception and score in 67 seconds three plays 44 yards capped by the nine yard touchdown reception Fred Coleman his third of the year from Brock Ewer. I tell you Jerry Jensen has been doing this for a long time the senior co-captain selling his body I tell you the young linebackers playing behind him got to love his attitude. The Huskies now to kick off with 142 left. Here in the half, they lead at 17 nothing. Jones gets into this one, sends it end over end, taking it the 15 yard line. Down there is Hakeem. He's got open field ahead of him. He's going to maneuver to the 15, roll out of bounds. Finally over there, making the tackle was Jerry Butler. But not before Hakeem anguishes the side, the uh, the Husky crowd here with a 37 yard return. Well it's kind of a, one of those short pooch kicks again and you hope that your coverage gets down there in time to shut him down. The Husky cover team that time absolutely looked like they were just kind of straddling down there hoping they wouldn't get a big play on him and son of a gun. Oz Akeem did it. <laughs> Man he is something. He is a real joy to watch if you're a football fan. Oz Akeem out of Los Angeles Fairfax High School. He was a preseason all-American. Here's McKechnie back to throw. He's looking in Hakeem's neighborhood. Here's the pass to Hakeem. It's caught, but he spun around, coughed up the football, and out of bounds. The Aztecs retain possession at the Husky 28-yard line. That's when you know the true greatness of an athlete, don't you? When everybody on the field knows where that football is going, <laughs> and the kid still makes the catch. Well, I'll tell you, San Diego State has had their fill of great receivers from Haven Moses, Darnay Scott. Oz Akeem right there trying to fight for more yardage and uh, sometimes just have to go down. 
17 nothing Huskies with a minute 23 left in the half the Aztecs threatening McKechnie at first and 10 over the right side and is caught slanting to the 20 near hash mark to far hash mark going the width of the field still on his feet and finally being brought down after gaining a first down over there was Jesus Reyes. And Jermaine Smith is writhing in pain down there on the stadium floor. Well, after he went nearly the width of the field in that slant right to left, Reyes picked up 12 yards. Jermaine Smith may just have the wind knocked out of him. There's a big pile over there. It's hard to tell. A massive humanity landing on him. May have gotten a shot to the lower rib cage there. This this play has worked well for San Diego State today. A little wide receiver under route. This boy can fly pretty good. Uh, Reyes number five is a very fast runner and the Huskies just seemed like they were out of position for this play. Boy he got Suki Wiggs right in the ribs there. Suki put the hat right into the ribs of his teammate inadvertently pow right there. Might have got the, the hit the ribs. Well it's a lot of weight pounding into your lower side there and Suki yep. got a lot of weight behind him. And hip pad will cover the hip, but there's very little on the ribs there for Jermaine Smith, 5'11, 195. Jermaine looks to be all right. Didn't knock the do rag off. 104 left in the first <laughs> half. The Huskies leading the Aztecs 17 0. They've got a hold here. Ball resting on the 18 yard line. First and 10 for McKechnie and company. Twin receivers right side. Hakeem is way out here to the near. McKechnie pass over to Hakeem. Shakes right, moves left, leans forward, coughed up the football, recovered by the Huskies. They're going to rule that down, though. They have to. That was inside the 15 yard line. Aztecs retain possession at the Husky 14. Gain of four on the play. Jason Chorak working hard out there. Haven't mentioned his name a ton today, but got a lot of players blocking for the Aztecs up front. Azakim Tony Parrish just settling down right there making sure that he gets the tackle on the guy. He was clearly down though Kevin. 17 nothing 26 seconds left first half McKechnie second and six back to throw looking over the middle forced out of the pocket slings it left sideline and underthrown. intended receiver was Hakeem. So it brings about a third and six now for the Aztecs. Hakeem working hard to get open on the far side against Tere Butler who has come in for Jermaine Smith and last week Tere had a couple of late touchdowns uh, thrown over him by BYU so it's a real test for him Jermaine Smith coming back in though right now. Oz Hakeem this afternoon Are you ready for this Sonny six catches 104 yards. That's a day right there. Not bad considering right now they have a total of 159. 17 seconds remaining third and six Aztecs looking left is McKechnie throwing right as McKechnie threw it away out of bounds. Smart play as he still has 12 seconds on the clock. Now he sits fourth and six and the Aztecs are going to go for the field goal. Now they have a fairly untested kicking group as well. Nate Tanberg is a red shirt freshman. He is on now to kick the attempt field goal. The ball will be spotted at the Aztec 21 yard line. Here is the kick. It is up. Looks good from here. And it is. So the Aztecs are on the board. The score Washington 17 San Diego State 3 with seven seconds remaining in the first half. Well this day is uh, quite a contrast to last weekend when game time temperatures in Provo under sunny skies were 85. We were greeted with a gorgeous morning a lot of sunshine and some broken clouds temperature here in Seattle today uh, I guess probably around 70 75 degrees. It's perfect for football. Folks out there on a very gentle Lake Washington. Wind starting to pick up a little bit here in the stadium. 
Now that's a big score only three points Kevin but these guys have really played an outstanding ball game today. I'm speaking of San Diego State. Yes. If they can hang them in here now that uh, Akeem right there Oz Akeem number three. He has been the one to keep him in this ball game with some great plays and here's a punt return that he could have gone all the way. It's uh, just ran out of room on the sidelines over there. To Ray Butler with a good stop to knock him out of bounds. Squib kick. And it is fielded beautifully by J.J. Joe Jarzinka going to go the width of the field, takes a block on the right side by Cleveland, stumbles forward, and that will do it for the first half. So the Aztecs in six plays go 32 yards with a 31-yard field goal to put themselves on the board, but they trail the Huskies by two touchdowns. It's 17 to three Washington at half in Seattle. Seventeen to three score the Huskies lead the San Diego State Aztecs here at halftime Husky Stadium along with Sunday six killer Kevin Calabro. Hope you're enjoying the broadcasts here in the Northwest and down in Los Angeles this afternoon with the broadcast is being seen live. Well neither team was able to do much on the ground the Aztecs gained just three yards while the Huskies were able to pick up thirty nine yards and I thought defensively the Aztecs did a, a wonderful job to stop Rashawn Sheehy. Holding Sheehy, Sonny, to 11 carries, 22 yards. Well, coming in the ball game, most defensive coordinators like to take one phase of the game away, Kevin. Obviously, today, San Diego State feels they have a chance by stopping the running attack, and so far, they've stopped Rashawn Sheehy. Meantime, Brock Hewitt's had a big afternoon with 9 of 14 completed, 183 yards, and two touchdowns, and he has spread the wealth with Payton and Coleman receiving touchdown passes this afternoon. Here was the first one of the day. This was a very nice throw out there and in the athletic ability of Jerome Payton stretching out to get the ball in the end zone one on one out there with Higgins number 17 of San Diego State. McKechnie right here number seven throwing the ball downfield to the guy we talked about seems like every play Oz Akeem from San Diego State this guy was all over the place uh, first half for San Diego State. Then after San Diego State moved the ball deep into Husky territory Oz Hakeem at the Husky goal line had the ball punched free by Tony Parrish. It rolled off a Husky player out of the end zone and resulted in Husky possession. Yeah that's too bad that San Diego State was in a position to score some points that time and and to come away with nothing was very tough on the coach I'm sure. Well State has fumbled twice and has lost the ball once and that was it and they've also been penalized six for sixty five yards. Pretty even right there the passing yards coming in we knew we were going to be high from both squads. Just at the rushing yards, coaches thought there would be a little bit more for the Huskies at this point. First down conversion, San Diego State one for seven. Utah has had, or I should say, uh, the University of Washington has been uh, four for six converting the first down. We are going to take a break and return with the action at halftime. The Huskies lead the Aztecs 17 to three. Last weekend in the Huskies win over BYU Fred Coleman caught a couple of touchdown passes the senior from Tyler Texas really coming into his own now. Well you know last season it seemed like Brock Heward the Husky QB really honed in on Jerome Payton as his favorite target. But this year he's really kind of spread it around a little bit you know. Uh, Mr. Coleman Freddie as you said from Tyler Texas has become a favorite as well and he's really risen to the top he's made some great catches and he's been open downfield and Brock Hewitt's finding him. Well as fine as this football program is and you know about high school players in Texas Fred represents as the lone representative the state of Texas He's the only Texan on the squad. Well Fred Coleman has done a good job just like last week he come up with a big play in the corner and Brock Hewitt able to find him perfect pass good catch. I really like Fred too from the standpoint of uh, his personality very even keel guys roommate of Rashawn Sheehy's and was very supportive of Rashawn last year after three games uh, as the starting back in the, the Husky backfield he went out with some ankle and heel problems and an off the field incident. Uh, I, I think Fred Coleman should be given a great deal of credit for the return of Rashawn Sheehy to form. Well he's brought him all the way back Rashawn Sheehy voted in as one of the captains by the most votes ever and as long as Jim Labright has been here in Huskyville. And so Fred Coleman senior he wants to win all those seniors as we saw at halftime have a real desire to uh, come through all the negatives of the past and make it successful here. And they have excellent chemistry on this football team no question. But the Huskies now in the second half what will be their objective you suppose what adjustments have they made. 
Well, number one, try and get to McKechnie, the San Diego State quarterback, a little bit more, and also uh, run the football. Defensively for the Aztecs, Sonny, can they continue to make the stops as they did in the first half against this husky, intimidating front line, or, or will, will Washington essentially wear them down in a war of attrition? I think that's what's going to happen, Kevin. It's a thing of conditioning. We don't know how well conditioned they are. We know the Huskies have really worked hard to stay in top shape. Let's go down now to the field in Tom Glasgow. Kevin, thank you. Jim, I know you're not surprised we have a competitive football game. What did you emphasize to your team during the half? Well, the key thing is possess the football. we got to do a better job of controlling the line of scrimmage. We need some rushing yards. They're stacking up against our run well. We have to possess the ball. we we'll turn it over a little bit too much. I'll let you get to your football team. Thanks, Tom. Husky head coach Jim Lambright. Kevin, back to you. We'll be back with the opening kickoff in the second half in just a moment. 17-3, Washington Huskies lead the San Diego State Aztecs. Az Hakim will be, as he was in the first half, the man for the Huskies to watch. Very elusive, very quick, very shifty. <laughs> you can see right there the total yardage. All-purpose yards, 167. It's another reason right here on this kickoff that I'm sure the Husky coaching staff do not want to see him return the ball. Hakeem is on the far hash mark and on the near hash mark he's joined by Marty Graham a 5 8 1 85 speedster. They're in tandem. Randy Jones will kick off. Jones with a run up in the boots and it's high and not very far. Running up to field it is Hakeem at his 20 and is quickly wrapped up and brought down before he had any thought of breaking open. Tackle on the play made by Todd Johnson. A return of four yards. Better coverage that time, Kevin, on the a little short. It's actually kind of a long pooch catch is what it is to try and get the coverage downfield. And Todd Johnson coming up with a big stop. Kevin McKechnie, the starting quarterback, severely sprained an ankle in the win over Navy last Friday night. It was on cut crutches through much of the week, but McKechnie has not shown at all the effects of that injury as he throws to Hakeem to open the second half for the Aztecs. And he is wrapped up and dropped down by Lester Towns. Boy, on those little under routes like that, you really don't want to see a big man like Lester Towns who will come from the inside here to Ray Butler hanging on his man, but he, you really shouldn't take a do a complete circle when you're trying to cover a Oz Hakeem. You're going to get lost on it. Thank gosh for uh, for the coaching staff to have uh, Lester Towns out there to make the tackle. Aztec ball, second and six. McKechnie, the quarterback, big handoff, bootleg left, throws out on the flat, and the pass completed to a tight end. He's rolled off his feet and picks up the first down. Chad Flick with the reception for the first down. San Diego State. We saw Kevin McKechnie on the first half go to his right and throw the ball. This time a little maneuverability to the left, throws the toss just enough over Chris Campbell so he can't knock it down. Kevin McKechnie can throw the ball well on the run. Harrison with a stop that time. First and ten for the Aztecs. McKechnie with the wind blowing in his face. Fakes the handoff and spinning ahead is Tyrone Evans to the 35 yard line. There's a gain one, of a couple. There's one of those little plays, Kevin, we talked about to try and keep the defense honest. Short little running play, make him at least look inside, look for the running play, and then allow Kevin McKechnie to do what he does best, and that's throw the football downfield. Lester Towns, the fine linebacker from Pasadena, California, who directs the defense, comes up with the stop. Lester 6'3, 240, the sophomore this year. Southern California kids on this Washington Husky program. Second and seven now for McKechnie. Draw play up the middle at Evans. And again, he picks up a couple of yards before he's rolled down. And guess who was in on that play? Lester Towns, one more time. One, once again, far side of the field, you've got uh, from this shot, you're going to look on the right side. See Chris Campbell, 35, just barely missing Evans. Evans with that great quickness able to. Get it upfield to run into Lester Towns. Nigel Burton there as well. Sacramento kid. 5'9 and 180. Third now and five yards to go for the Aztecs. And the ball resting at their own 36-yard line. McKechnie 
Five step drop stops and pops. Landing from the right to the left, far hash mark. The pass broken up. It was Oz Hakeem who took a pretty good jolt that time. Hakeem shaken up as he limps off the field. That was Mel Miller from Torrance, California. In on the stop. Now the Aztecs will punt it away, and Joe Jarzinka is back to receive the punt. Don Copeland will set up at his own 22. Huskies lead 17 to 3. We're just underway here in the third period from Seattle, Washington. The left footer sends a high, wobbly spiral taken by Jarzinka. Fair catch called for, and he'll take it at his own 24. That's where Brock Ewan and company will take over. 38 yard punt from Copeland. See Benji Olson there, Kevin, 76. Coming back off that back surgery he had this past offseason, trying to work himself back into shape. He, was, uh, he came back all right, but he found himself not up to playing shape. And so he's getting he's playing some and, and he's sitting some, but starting the second half, the Husky coaches feel they need him in the ballgame. AP All American first team. This past season and a preseason picked by everybody as All America. Ewart, fake handoff, drops back, flings the spiral left side and overthrew Coleman slightly out of bounds. Let's go to Tom Glasgow with an injury update down on the sideline. Kevin San Diego State defensive back Abdul Rahim actually getting a cast applied as we speak and you can see now they're going to put some styrofoam type cushion or something of that nature so that cast once it hardens uh, is not a threat to other players on the field but it looks like they're doing everything they can to get Abdul Rahim back into the game. We'll, we'll see if the Huskies go that direction at the substitute for Rahim at that right corner spot. Husky second and ten. You were at the handoff to Sheehy. Cut back, move ahead. And this time he picks up about five yards on the play, but they're going to be shy of the first down. Gain of seven, actually. It's third and three. You know, actually, Abdul Rahim has been really prevalent on that defense. He's been the fifth defensive back in there. He's really been kind of shadowing the H back, whoever goes in motion out of the Husky backfield. But that was a good second down play for the Huskies. Much like San Diego State to keep the defense honest and get some success, the Huskies need to run the football. She, as we mentioned at half, had 11 carries for 22 yards in the first half. Jerzink is the wide out near side. Man in motion, Jerome Payton right to left. Ewart back to throw. Jumps into the air, makes the pass over the middle for the first down. It is received over there by Jerome Payton. A jump pass by Brock Ewart. Nicely done with touch over the middle and the Huskies keep it moving. I saw a few of those tosses in the San Diego State press guide, uh, the old Don Horn or somebody. <laughs> you don't see that very often, but you know, Brock Hewitt is 6'5. Now watch right here. You see him, little jump pass, get it down. Oh, nice hit in there. Not only is Jerome Payton fast, he's also tough to take a hit like that. Very resilient. And the ball now at the 36. First to 10, you are back to throw. Screen pass left side. Sheehy rams into his own Bumble. man and brought Bumble. down. The ball is stripped and it is grabbed by the Aztecs. They have possession down at the Husky 26-yard line. Cameron Chance steps in and rips the ball away. Well, that was kind of an ugly screenplay to begin with. If you look out to the far side, it looks like right here it's set up pretty well for Sean Sheehy in position, but the linemen miss all kinds of blocks over there. Tony Coates not exactly sure what to do. Rashawn spun around and coughing it up. Chance gets an opportunity, put his hands on the football. That didn't happen much as a defensive lineman. He was overjoyed. Aztecs take over now. At the Husky 27 yard line, a McKechnie gone bundle. He's looking to the end zone, a post pattern intended for Hakeem with the ball overthrown. He was double covered down there, Sonny. Good job by Teray Butler, number 10, to kind of push him a little bit. Make a little contact, throw his timing off. Then you allow time for Tony Parrish, number seven, to get over from his middle free safety position. The Aztecs now, the second turnover of the afternoon by the Huskies, have it second and ten with 11 03 left in the third. Washington leading by a two touchdown margin. McKechnie back to throw a hard rush from the right. Throws it out, safety valve man right side. Tyrone Evans dropped behind his own line of scrimmage. Flag was thrown, however, in the backfield. 
Marcus Harrison with the initial stop for Washington. Could be a hold call over there and Mr. Turley at right tackle. Jason Chorak, preseason All-American for the Huskies, number 46 for the Huskies on the left side of the line. See it coming into play right there. He's kind of just grabbing his back of his jersey. It's hard to do that right in front of the official. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat the down. What's interesting is that is the first time we've mentioned Jason Chorak's name within the game broadcast, Sonny. They've done a real nice job to slow him down. Yes, they have. The double tight uh, in formation allowing the tackle and the guard and, and the tight end, everybody to double team him wherever he goes. And Jason does have quickness on him, so that time they did get away with the holding call the Huskies did. All Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Year a year ago. Aztec set up at the Husky 40-yard line. McKechnie, a hard rush, scramble. There's Jason Shorak. Makes the stop, wraps up McKechnie around the ankle and just brought him down to the turf for a big loss. Penalty on the play as well, Kevin. Could be another holding call. You see Chorak working right through the middle there, staying with it. <laughs> Chris Campbell was tackled. <laughs> He's been tackled a couple times today. Jerry Jensen also being tackled earlier in the ball game. That's what the defensive people have oh, to do. You just stay relentless. On the offense, penalty refuse. The third down. That's a good move. Refuse the penalty and let Jason Chorak get one more sack. Because it's third down and 22 to go. And you know what McKechnie's going to do. 10.26 to go here in the third quarter. McKechnie from the shotgun. He's got a duo left side. Man in the slot to his left and a wide out on the right. And he is forced hard by Shorak to throw ahead to Evans. And a flag goes down instantly. And Shorak. Some words for McKechnie. And for his teammate Jerry Jensen. But Jerry Jensen was really coming on the left side. Ball starts on the offense, the five-yard penalty. Good job by Jason Chorak right there, but good dump off by McKechnie before he was going to get leveled by Jerry Jensen coming from his weak linebacker position. Well, the Husky defense right now trying to turn this game in a hurry. Looks Washington like they're leading by 14. Looks like they've turned it up a little bit, Kevin, yeah. in this series. They coming after him a little bit from different angles and starting to put that pressure on. Now they're exalting the crowd to try to get them involved. That's the other thing the Aztecs have done. They've taken this highly partisan Washington crowd a little bit out of the flow here. It's the home opener, the 108th home opener in the history of this fine football program here in Seattle. Timeout has been called by the Aztecs with 9.51 to go in the third quarter. The Aztecs, when we come back, face a third and 34 trailing by 14. Look at this group here, Kevin. Huh? You don't have to be in sunny Southern California to have those Hawaiian shirts on, huh? You got to make your own sunshine, pal. <laughs> you know that. Aztec trail by 14. Third and 34. The ball at their own 48. McKechnie, the handoff up the middle, and Tyrone Evans is snowed under. So the Aztecs elect not to put the ball in the air, avoid the turnover, and wisely they will punt it away. It's only a few things you can do with third and 36 <laughs> is draw a screen or just let her air it out down deep somewhere. And the Husky defense right there, Lester Towns at the bottom, number 17. Joe Jarzinka could break one. Here's the snap to go. And the punt is high. Jarzinka is under it, hit by his own man. The ball rolls back. It's going to go to the goal line, touched by the Aztecs, and they keep it in play. They can. Down around the two or three yard line. There's a flag down. It appeared that Jarzinka was hit by his own man, however, just as he settled under the football. But well, that man might have been pushed into him. Yeah, Reyes, number five, may have been in the same area. All day today, the San Diego State coverage teams on the punts have been very close to the punter. Excuse me, the punt return man. I think you still have to sort it out a little bit. 
C21 Jarzinka right here zeroing in on the ball. Preliminary indication of interference with the right to catch the ball. Interference with the opportunity to catch the front against the uh, kicking team. Be 15 yards, first down. Now you have to give that receiver a two yard radius around the body. They did not do that. Ted Toner's arguing that number 10, I believe, was Teray Butler of the Huskies, actually had blocked him from behind to get him into the area. And from that angle, it kind of looked like that, but Reyes definitely had made contact with the punt return. Huskies take over with 8.57 left in the third quarter play. In tandem here on the right side, Coleman and Payton. Sheehy, the lone man in the backfield. And Mike Reed lines up at an H back spot, actually on the line of scrimmage to the right side. Here's the handoff to Sheehy. Veers back to the middle. He's got a surge, and he's in the convoy, rumbling ahead to near midfield, out around the 47 yard line. There's that Husky offensive line, a gain of 16 as they carry Rasheed. Who had the ball? Was it Rashawn Sheehy, Olin Kruitz, or Ben Catlitz? It's hard to tell in this play. It looked like the scrum going downfield. Look at the push. That is great drive right there by the offensive line, Mike Reed and Rashawn Sheehy. <laughs> Excellent blocking, though, Kevin, right at the point of attack. Olin Kruitz, 6'4, 290, the junior. His team all Pac-10 leads the way. Here's Ewart now back to throw. Hangs a high one over the middle. It's all Jerome. He's got running room. Can he meet the deep man to the goal line? He will. Payton with a touchdown. 53-yard hookup between Ewart and Payton for goal. A touchdown, Huskies. He and Jason Moore in a foot race, and Jerome just had way too much real estate to work with. That man is quick. Not too many guys are going to catch Jerome Payton when he has room in the open field like that just to turn on the Rockets and go to the corner. I tell you, we're seeing two fine receivers today. Jerome Payton and Oz Akeem for San Diego State, but this was Jerome Payton's moment. 23 to 3 with 8.21 left here in this third quarter play. Two plays, 69 yards, time of possession, 36 seconds, and it is capped by Randy Jones. Extra point kick that is good. Timeout on the field. A 53-yard TD pass to Jerome Payton, his second of the afternoon, has given the Huskies a 24-3 lead. 24-3, the score. The Huskies lead San Diego State with 821 left in the third period of play. We want to just take a moment and give a special thank you to all of our partners, your local cable operators, who've taken the time to provide a special channel so that you can watch the University of Washington host San Diego State. The local cable operators deserve a round of applause for making this possible, both here in the Northwest and down in Southern California in Los Angeles. They are looking on today as the Huskies have taken a 24 to 3 lead. Jones gets under the third again, pops it up to about the 22. Taken by Marty Graham. And Graham is knocked down in front of his own bench at about the 30 yard line. Now, the Husky defense seemed to establish a little momentum. They got the crowd into the game. They forced on a third and 24 San Diego State to punt it away. And then the Huskies. Wasted no time. Two plays, 69-yard drives. Time of possession, 36 seconds. Jerome Payton catches his second touchdown pass of the afternoon. This a 53-yarder. Took a shot on the chin. They're going to patch him up, and I'm sure he'll be back in. Husky defense needs to reassert itself again. They really did turn it up a notch, Kevin, on that last series. And McKechnie was actually hurried more than he had been in the entire first half on the last drive. And the Husky offensive line created some things on that big gainer of 12 yards for Mr. Sheehy. And then they open up some space for Brock Ewer to operate and Jerome Payton. All right, McKechnie will take over for the Aztecs, first and 10. Hand off Tyrone Evans, off right tackle, trying to move ahead. And boy, he is stopped and dropped. Tony Parrish. With a big blow at about the 35 yard line. Drops Tyrone Evans in his tracks. Have another penalty down there. Probably blocking from behind. Parrish. 
Aztecs. Legal block on the Aztecs. Parrish, 5'11", 205. The senior, another Californian from Marina High School down in Huntington Beach. One of the 97 team captains and one of that class of 93. The legal block in the back against the offense, 10 yards from the point of the foul. Repeat the down, first down. The legal block in the back by the Aztecs. Here you see Evans moving to the right side here. Lester Towns making pursuit, but Tony Parrish, that's a pretty sure tackle right there, Kevin. That is a shot. <laughs> Put the helmet right in the chest, wrap him up, and push. 24 3 count. Back to throw McKechnie. He's wrapped up, got the pass away. It's incomplete. He took a shot from Jerry Jensen. Jerry's had a big afternoon with an interception that set up a Husky score late, late, late in the second period of play. Well, First and 20, San Diego State is not helping themselves with the penalties again in the second straight game. Can't afford to have guys like Jerry Jensen coming free and putting a lick like that on your quarterback. The backup is Mike Smith, 6'3", 220 senior, a transfer from the University of Washington. He's never taken a, a snap in an actual game, never. McKechnie stays in and hands off. This one's going to go to Watson. He trips his way down the right side. His gang tackled over there. Lester Towns, though, was the man that got down low, wrapped him up, dropped him at the line of scrimmage at about the 21 yard line. Just looks like the Husky defense is fresher. You know, the conditioning that they, there's a good look at Michael Smith. I used to watch him practice out here in scrimmage on the Husky turf. Made a decision a couple years ago that uh, he would seek his fortune elsewhere. Went back near home. He's from Whittier, California. 24 to 3 score. The Huskies lead. It's a third and 17. They call that a pickup of three in that previous play. Third and 17 now for the Aztecs. Trips left side. McKechnie back to throw. Flush down in the pocket. Oh my. Sorak came at him. He had to step by Jason. And then that set up the big one on one confrontation. Marcus Hairston was there, got low, and brought the man down hard. They've really turned up the old motor this half. Husky defense coming right up the middle. Marcus Hairston, 17, or excuse me, 27. Big lift. McKechnie had to make a decision. Do I want Shorak to tee off on me, or will it be the smaller Hairston? He chose Hairston. <laughs> he chose the smaller number, but not necessarily the smaller guy. No, man, he is dynamite in a small package. Here's the snap below and handled by Copeland. He got the ball up beautifully and a great tight spiral Again. down around the 39. Coleman was there, but he was hit simultaneous to catching the football and a flag. 45 yard boot by Copeland. Smith 22 there to get the lick on him, but all day San Diego State has been in the area of where the guy is to receive the punt. Been caught twice in a row now, Kevin. <laughs> Got to give him two feet, and he obviously can't hit him while the football is coming down into the hands. I'm not quite sure what he's thinking. He's trying to make a tackle. Interference against the kicking team violated the two yards belt. Be five yards from the point of foul. Be Washington first and ten. Washington first and ten. I'll march it off from the point of possession. And Mr. Smith getting an explanation from the coaching staff. He's a freshman. He'll learn. 24-3 score. Huskies lead. They'll have possession when we come back. First and 10 with 6.20 to go in the third from Seattle. Here we are, Kevin. Big lead. Washington's really asserting themselves here in the third quarter. Defensively and offensively with the big play. Of course, the Jerome Payton with the big touchdown catch. I tell you, two games now, Jerome Payton's stock has really risen. 24 to 3 score. Ewart hands off left side. Sheehy stutter step, cuts back against the grain and maneuvers to out about the 47 yard line. Sets up a second down and seven for the Huskies with 6.09. Clock running here in this second quarter of play. Yeah, Jerome Payton, interesting story out of Vancouver, British Columbia, and a transfer from. Uh, a university in Halifax, 5'11", 180, a senior. Team captain, one of the team captains here in 97. Last weekend, he had seven receptions for 163 yards. Here's Ewart going deep. And out there, under the ball, and not able to quite get there with Jaworin Hooker. 
the freshman from Ellensburg, Washington. Folks, this man is an absolute burner. Uh, 100, 200, 400 meter champion in the state of Washington as a senior and set a state record in the 100 last year and was the quickest freshman in the nation over 100 meters last year. Well, it's good to see him run and turn it on. One thing the young receiver needs to do, though, is adjust to where the pass is thrown. And he'll learn that. He's only a freshman, but you can tell that he can definitely get downfield in a hurry. That's good to see the freshman get a little PT here early. Andre Dessensure, the wide out to the right side. Man in motion, Joe Jarzinka. Ewart back to throw. Steadies, fires right side. Jarzinka makes the catch at around the 48-yard line, but not enough for first down. I, Andy Osborne with the tackle. And so the Huskies looking at a fourth and seven. Elect to kick it away with 524 left here in the third. It's a nice pass for a completion, but still, when you have to go that far, eight yards, you want to try and get the ball down, at least give your chance an opportunity to make a first down. Sean O'Loughlin in the kick. Again, the kicking game, such a very important part of success on the near hash mark. O'Loughlin gets rid of it, hand over hand. Taking it around the 13-yard line by Eric Lewis. And Lewis leads right ahead there. before he is stormed under. 37-yard punt from Sean O'Loughlin. So the Aztecs will take it deep in their own territory. Trailing 24 to 3. Here's the bootleg by McKechnie. Oh, Hips out on the flat, and it is intercepted by the Huskies. Second interception of the afternoon for Washington in the first for Mr. Todd Johnson, who had a big hit early in this third period on special teams and went limping over to the sideline. Suffice to say, Mr. Johnson's doing much better. Well, we talked about dropping off into coverage. You see him, he knows his responsibility. He has to get to the spot he's supposed to be as they diagram it up for coverages. And Todd Johnson, perfect timing to turn around and make the pick. So one play from McKechnie and company, and the Huskies take over on the on, turnover. The Huskies didn't have many interceptions last year, and they picked off two here this afternoon. 24 to 3 score. Ewart hands off to Sheehy. This time he's going to go well outside, has blocking. He's at the 20, trying to get inside, but he spun around and dropped inside the 15 yard line. Eric Lewis over there to defend. About the first time this afternoon, he's been able to utilize his speed and get to the outside. Most of the afternoon, he had the two safeties from San Diego State getting out there to prevent him from making it. You see right there, Julius McChristian was tied up by the Husky blocker and allowing Rashawn Sheehy to use that speed to get outside. Offensive coordinator Scott Lenahan in the second half is elected to push Sheehy outside, bounce him outside to use that speed. The Huskies were trying to overpower the Aztecs in the first half up the middle. Good look in the eyes there, Rashawn Sheehy. Men jumping all over that line of scrimmage from both the Huskies and the Aztecs. The handoff and flag fly. Sheehy is muscled down at the 16-yard line. Four and a half minutes remaining here in this third period. But the Huskies on top, 24 to three. Next weekend, the much-awaited matchup between Washington and Nebraska here in Seattle at Husky Stadium. Hard to tell if Coach Lambright is a happy guy there. He's probably not happy with the Up first time. On the defense, five yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. I'm sure he likes the way they picked it up here in the second half. Let's go down to Tom Glasgow on the sideline. Kevin, some outward signs of frustration from the San Diego State sideline. As soon as McKechnie threw that interception, one of the players tossing a full cup of water high in the air and dousing this sideline reporter. Back to you. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing you wore that parka today. Here's Ewart throwing over the middle and underthrown was Cam Cleveland, who put the brakes on and tried to lunge forward to make the catch, coming back to his quarterback. That ball thrown alone and away. Now the Huskies scored in the first half off a Jensen interception. They went three plays, 44 yards in a minute seven and scored on a hookup to Fred Coleman. Nine yards from Ewart to Freddie. Let's see what they can do now. The Todd Johnson interception, 4-16 remaining, third period, second and five. Tape on wide right side. Sheehy, the lone man in the backfield. Everybody else is up on the line. Hewitt's going to check at the line. And he drew a man off. Well, actually, I think his own man jumped on the left side. Looked like Aaron Dalen, 75. 
Well, when you're changing the play at the line of scrimmage, a lot of things are happening. You know, it's uh, the defense is jumping and moving around, and sometimes the offensive linemen get a little skitzy and decide to jump, <laughs> jump a little early. Ball start on the offense, five yards. Sonny, as a quarterback, when you change a play, what determines that? What what is what's the first thing that uh, sets off the alarms and you look at the defense across the line. Well usually it's a color or a specific number you make yell out a specific number where there'd be 90 90 and that'll change the play then he'll call it when he's underneath the center. Wide receivers on the right side Payton and Coleman. You are not second and ten. Hand off to she he goes right side gets a block from Coleman. And actually met his own man and was slowed up and dropped at the 12-yard line. A gain of four on the play. James Higgins makes the stop. When you're looking across that line at the defenders, are there are there little things that you look for in order to check a play at the line? As we see, she he. Well, there's right stuff side. that you pick up, and when you're watching all that game film and uh, all those meetings that you go through, tendencies that the defense will show you. You know, if you have a play call that you know the way they're they're stacking it, you're not going to have any success. Well, you change it to something that you hope that you can get into. A lot of times, quarterbacks were calling the wrong cadence, so you're stuck <laughs> unless you want to call timeout. Huskies now try it again. Third and six. Man in motion. Payton right to left. Receivers wide left, wide right. Ewart looking left sideline. That ball knocked down and nearly intercepted. Incomplete pass. The intended receiver was Fred Coleman off to the far sideline. Over there was James Higgins to step in front of Freddie and knock that ball down. Brock Hewitt has not thrown very many interceptions over the last two years. That one could have been his first one this season. James Higgins, number 17 on the left side of the screen, was all over the Husky receiver. There was not really a chance to uh, make a completion there. Well, the Huskies have been very good inside the red zone. They were four of seven last weekend against BYU. Here's Jones to kick. The ball is going to be set by Ryan Chicoin at the 20. Here's the kick by Randy. It is up. And did he push it? No, he did not. He split the uprights. Field goal, Randy Jones. And the Huskies now take a 27 to 3 lead with 319 left in the third quarter of play. Well, the students aren't yet in class here at UW, so they haven't, the football players haven't quite gained that big man on campus status. <laughs> Thus, the heads have not gotten too big, and you can tell that today they've been focused on the end deck, not on next weekend's game against Nebraska. As they've just taken it up a notch, as you mentioned, Sonny, here in the second half of play. Randy Jones again gets well under this kick and boots it short up around the 36 yard line. That's where the Aztecs now will take over. Trailing by a bundle now. Kevin McKechnie, the quarterback, back to throw hard. Russ Jason Chorak holds him down, but not before he could dump it out on the right side. A little swing pass over there. Tyrone Evans, the receiver, and he's immediately dropped down at about the line of scrimmage. Jeremiah Farms. Jeremiah over there to make the stop. McKechnie again took a pretty good lick there from Jason Chorak. It's not too often you uh, avoid the rush and the efforts of a guy like Jason Chorak, but you throw it out there in the flat and you'd still lose a yard. That's because the Husky defense, Jeremiah Farms, can flat run as a linebacker. Nice looking player, red shirt freshman is Farms, 6'1 and 235. Broke his thumb last year and was held to just three game appearances. McKechnie back to throw right side, going up top. Little timing play, and it's caught. Man rolled down at about the 26 yard line. And it looked like a tight end got away there for the Aztecs. Taj Johnson. Who was busy last weekend in the win over Navy at six catches for 163 yards. That's his second catch of the afternoon. Good for 37. Initially, it looked like a one hand grab for the reception. We'll see on this replay it is. Oh, that's what a great. great catch. Now, his left hand was pushing the defender back the other way, allowing his right hand to come up and make the great grab. Johnson, the senior from Ardmore, Oklahoma. Here now back to throw McKechnie, first and 10 deep in Arizona or in the UW territory, and the ball is overthrown. The intended receiver down there was a big old tight end, Chad Flick. That ball was simply too high, too wide for him. Again, pressure, Jason Chorak back there in the offensive backfield. One thing that's McKechnie's really been hammered on here in the third quarter is people laying on him. He's been hit, laid on, and uh, it's gonna wear on him. <laughs> 
unlike the first half where the Huskies were unable to get any action or hits on the quarterback here in the second half they've really done it looks like Mike Matuyaia applying that one second and ten handoff to Evans he trips out of his own backfield and lunges forward for a gain maybe a one on the play brings up second down with a minute 50 or actually third down and 10 with a minute 50 left here in the third quarter the Huskies lead 27 to 3 Suki Wiggs up front well it's a conditioning thing too it's not that it's that hot out here but going all day against a team that prides itself on its uh, shape and staying fourth brother Max week, I'm sorry Kevin last week two, two yards rushing and today a negative three for the Aztecs 200 yards through the air McKechnie pump fakes ducks under Jensen's horse collar gets rid of the ball is rolled down by Jeremiah Farms and is holding his left knee McKechnie now is really taking a beating. Well, the Husky defense letting it all hang out right now. They're coming at McKechnie hard. You can tell he's hurting a little bit on that play. Jerry Jensen coming strong from the whip position again. Unable to wrap him up. And Jeremiah Farms landing on that looked like his left ankle. Nate Tanberg, the red shirt freshman, is on for the field goal attempt. The spot will be at about the 34 yard line. Here's the snap, the hold, the kick. It is up, and it is no good. So the Husky defense holds once again with 108 left in the third period. Washington will take over leading 27 to 3. McKechnie's a tough kid as evidence coming back this week from the ankle injury. After today he's going to probably have a few ice bags around his body. Yeah, to just put him in a deep freeze, <laughs> you know. Huskies now second and five. You were at the handoff left side. It's Shaw rumbling, spinning, and lunging and moving with a pack forward to about the 38 yard line. Cameron Chance makes the stop. Again, you have Jason Moore coming up from his safety position the night through. What he is very successful today, not allowing the Husky runners outside. See him right there, just missing the tackle. Marie Shaw, nice little spin move to get some additional yardage downfield. Shaw's just a sophomore from Sacramento and last weekend he was the man that pushed the ball over from one and two yards for a couple of touchdowns that were set up by Rashad Sheehy's long gainers on the ground. First and ten Huskies leading by 24 and a timeout as they switch ends. It's the end of the third period with Washington in command 27 to 3. Along with Sonny Six Killer, Kevin Calabro on hand at Husky Stadium. Somebody borrowed your boat today, Sonny. They better have it back by six. That's not a boat, that's a <laughs> that's a ship right there. Here's Ewart with a handoff up the middle. It's Maurice Shaw moving his way to the 45-yard line. Now an opportunity for the Huskies to get some youngsters, some repetition, earn a little confidence. 27 to 3 is the score. Brock Ewart remains in. Ewart's had a pretty good afternoon so far today. Ewart, 9 of 14, 183 yards. He had a touchdown in the first half. Totals have been good. He has not suffered an interception yet. Or yes, he has, as a matter of fact. 13 of 22, 244 yards. And Brock under center. Hand off again. Goes to Shaw. He's going to go solo. Spinning ahead for just shy of a first down. Tom Glasgow is down on the sidelines. Kevin, the next time we see the San Diego State offense on the field, it may be directed by that man, Mike Smith, the former Washington Husky, warming up on the sideline. Kevin McKechnie, apparently not injured, simply sitting on the bench. Ted Toler may be deciding it's uh, time to change quarterbacks and see if he can change momentum as well. Kevin? Yeah, I want to correct something I, I mentioned. I misspoke here. It has not been intercepted. A, a pass was completed, and then the ball was ripped out of the receiver's hands for a turnover earlier in this game by the Aztecs. And the Huskies look to be in command here with uh, their drive continuing to progress. It's a first down just by the nose of the football. There, there are Brock's numbers 13 to 22, 244 yards, three TDs. Wow. Not a bad day. That's just sensational. 
Well McKechnie really uh, given a, a great effort I could see him down on the field taking his bandages off and his padding on his elbows and Michael Smith does appear like he will come in next time they have the football. Timeout called by the Washington Huskies. And when we come back Washington will have it first and 10 leading 27 to 3. Twenty seven to three is our score thirteen forty seven remaining in the ball game. Boomer Esiason warming up. No it's, it's Mike <laughs> Smith. He looks a little bit like Boomer though. Boy, he's a big kid and uh, a lot of talent. He just decided he needed to go somewhere else besides the University of Washington a couple years ago and I tell you his adrenaline's got to really be flowing right now Kevin never taking a snap in a division one college game. Brock Hewitt wants to keep him sitting over there right now. The Huskies have it first and 10 with 13 47 to go in the game. Firmly in command 27 to 3. Hewitt play action looking deep throwing down the middle of the field. The receiver has fallen down Jerome Payton that left a man wide open the defensive back down there covering was James Higgins and James couldn't accelerate quickly enough to make the catch. So it's an incomplete pass second and 10. Going to rule incidental contact there between Higgins and Payton, and Jerome lost his footing, fell to the stadium floor. <laughs> Hard. And in front of everybody. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Hasn't happened very often, but I tell you that the Husky coaching staff maintaining the long pass play here in the fourth quarter. Double receivers right side, Cleveland, the tight end left, and the H back over there is Reed. They're going to hand off up the middle. Shaw picks up maybe a yard. San Diego State though is really trying to stay in it here. You know, Brock has had a lot of time to deliver the football. They haven't really put any pressure on him all day. Well, maybe one time on that jump pass, but. Uh, <laughs> He really has had a lot of time to get rid of the football. Jerzinka in the slot left side. Now he's the man in motion. Hewitt back to throw. Looking left sideline. A down and in. Oh. And a completed pass to Jerome Payton who crumbles beneath two defenders. But a great pickup from Hewitt to Payton down at the 35 yard line. It'll be Husky first and 10. Ball resting at the Aztec 35. We've seen Brock Hewitt throw the football long. Many times a day, but I guarantee you on that pass play, on this pass play you're going to see right now, Jerome Payton. Good crunch, but the defenders hit themselves. That was absolutely a bullet throw. Seven catches, 140 yards for Jerome, and two touchdowns. He'll get a breather, but he won't be out long. He still has his cap on. Ewart hands off left side, spinning over the left tackle, and picking up ground is Maurice Shaw to about the 28-yard line. Good pickup by the sophomore before he was stopped over there by Bia Muller. Okay. Marie Shaw has that little spin move. He's used it every time he's carried the ball, but he's been able to pick up two, three, four extra yards. Second and four now at the 29 for Washington with 12 minutes remaining in the contest. 27 to 3 is the score. Jason Moore the fine safety for San Diego State hobbling off the field down there Kevin looks like he hurt his ankle as well. San Diego State with 42 yards garnered here in the second half offensively. Here's the handoff bouncing off of the initial stop with Shaw and was able to skip outside before gang tackle gain of a couple. So the Huskies now have a third and two situation. Okay, the Huskies have gained 120 yards to date to this moment rushing the football. I guarantee you against San Diego State they're hard fought 120 yards. Nothing has been easy on the ground for them today. Huskies now third and two. Ball at the 27 yard line of the Aztecs. Ewart hands off. Left side at Shaw. Muscles ahead, and did he get to the 25 yard line? I believe he's short by about a yard. I think you're right. Crowd chanting go. 
So it's fourth and one for Washington. Julius McChristian from the linebacker spot with the stop, and Jim Lambright's going to go. He's going to go for the first down. Fred Coleman will come out. And the Huskies will add another blocker up front. Jeremy Brigham comes in, 6'6, 260 pound rat, back up tight end. Man in motion is Reed. A man jumped off the line of scrimmage. A defender might have jumped into the line. And uh, Olin Crute celebrating down there as if uh, the Huskies will be like, the recipients of an Aztec penalty. Yeah, it looked like Cameron Chance, number 92 for the Aztecs, jumped off. Well, you did the wise thing, didn't they? Everybody froze at the line. He got the ball. He said, well, uh, I might as well lean forward, get a first down while I'm here. Five yards, I'll result in a first down. Brock Hewitt probably changing the cadence around a little bit in the short yardage situation. And you always remind your own players in the huddle, I'm looking, I'm going to be screwing around with this cadence a little bit. Now, stay close. You know, don't be moving on me. Wide outs left and right. Man in motion is Mike Reed. He's the H back. Here's the handoff going left side. Maurice Shaw, 20, 15, 10 to the five. Spun out of bounds to the four yard line by Julius McChristian. Maurice Shaw turning it up. Fresh legs on for the Huskies here in the third quarter. And, and Shaw just carried him down the field. That's a pickup of 16 big ones right there. Very good play, but let's watch the line play right here. The blocking downfield, 51. Brad Hutt taking on two guys, knocking them out of the way. And really allowing Maurice Shaw to pick up an extra 10 yards. Shaw now 10 carries and 67 yards. Boy, those running backs like to see those guards pulling around nice, free, and clear and hitting somebody. Huskies now at the Aztec five. First and goal, 9.50 to go in the game. Ewart hands off. Shaw stumbles ahead. Made contact with two defenders. Leans forward to the goal line. Just trying to put that biscuit over the line. He was unable to do so. Rico Curtis hauled him down at about the one-yard line. Well, we the Huskies know that Maurice Shaw knows how to get it in the end zone. And that time he gave every effort he could, but uh, just about a half yard short. Great effort in here, Kevin. Again, a great job of the camera crew to get us a good look at the blocking up front and Sean Marie shot coming up just a little bit short. Huskies now have it at the Aztec one. Reed is in motion. Ewart second man through. Shaw oh, spun around, had the ball punched free. It's recovered by the Aztecs. At their own three yard line. Oh, good golly, that's too bad. That's one thing that'll happen when you spin on a regular basis. Sometimes it's going to catch up to you because you're going to spin right into somebody's helmet. And on that occasion, it looked like it may have happened. Boy, that was a gorgeous drive there, spearheaded by the running of Maury Shaw. And unfortunately, it was Shaw that had the ball punched out of his hands. T.J. Jackson was the man that was able to pry that ball free with a jolt. See a good look here. The initial shirt surge right there. He's trying to turn around. When you turn around to your left like that, somebody's going to grab that arm and look like that time Andy Osborne, 60, just pulled his arm away. Now here's Michael Smith, Kevin. First snap ever. Fumbles the ball. At his own one and goes down on top of it. Boy, this isn't the kind of situation you want to find yourself in either. <laughs> I mean, you're right there deep in your own backyard <laughs> at about the one-yard line taking your first college snap. That's all right, though. You fumble it, you get it back, take a deep breath. And just move on. He transferred from the UW in 95, and he has seen no game action in any NCAA football game. Well, That's actually, his first yeah, I'm not so sure it was his fault, but it looked like the center didn't quite get it to his hands. Smith under center, the handoff, and it very well could be a safety. Nope, the man's progress was stopped at about the half yard mark. Marty Graham. I tell you, as a quarterback, though, you're underneath in your own, like you say, back up in your own territory. You sometimes want to get down there like a wishbone quarterback and just cradle that ball back into <laughs> your hands, you know, and you're like a <laughs> loaf of bread. You know? <laughs> it's really center and quarterback have to be on the right page. Well, the Aztecs now third and 12. Probably just hoping to avoid the safety or the pick. Deep in their own territory. Look at the linemen. They're actually lined up in the purple end zone. Here's Smith. 
And the safety! Jensen is there. He got him high. Nigel Burton got him low. Gang tackle. Josh Smith was there as well. It is a safety. And the Husky score. Jensen was up high to make sure the dead ball was secure, but he had some teammates down low working along that turf. Nothing gets the defense fired up more. They've got turnovers and all that. But when you get a safety and firing out against a team in their own end zone, Josh Smith with the initial big hit and Jerry Jensen wrapping him up. Yeah, that was Smith. Great play by Josh. Boy, Josh Smith, two games in a row now, has been able to get great penetration, fired up, competitive young man, I'll guarantee you that. Bellingham, Washington. 29 to 3, the Husky scored the safety with 7.37 left in the ball game. Firing right through, right through the right tackle. He actually ended up beating their big man, Turley, who is uh, Kyle Turley, entitled as the All American, got beat big time on the inside by Josh Smith. Smith, Jensen, Nigel Burton down, down there as well. So that's the way to capitalize after your your own turnover you come right back and force the Aztecs in their own end to relinquish the football now the Aztecs will kick off to the Huskies and they have four men back two deep Jarzinka and Payton. Washington leading twenty nine to three with seven and a half minutes remaining in the game. Last safety the Husky scored was against San Jose State University just last year. Don Copeland will punt. The Aztecs have the option. They're going to punt. Copeland's gotten into a few this afternoon. He'll run up from his own 15 yard line and let it fly from the 20. That's a nice punt. Backpedaling and taking it for into his own 21. Up the left hash mark he comes, tries to angle middle, hit by two tacklers, bounces off, and then he swarmed. At about the 41 yard line, a return of 21 for Fearless Joe. You've heard it as Shoeless Joe? This is Fearless Joe, baby. 725 left in the game. Huskies lead it 29 to 3. The Huskies have scored on a safety and now have taken possession of the football at their own 41 yard line, leading San Diego State. 29 to 3. 725 remaining in the tilt here from Seattle, Washington. Jim Lambright actually saw his defense early in the third quarter pick up the momentum, and that's where everything else seemed to get rolling. Offense picked off that defense's enthusiasm and energy. They did a wonderful job. You were back to throw. Look at deep, tight spiral, has your own downfield. Coverage, flanking it all over it, and he brings it down to the 17 yard line. Jerome Payton with a sensational catch. Boy, oh boy. Coach Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator, has really made a point to come out and showcase Jerome Payton, particularly here in the second half. Some big catches by Jerome. See here, a little play action to hold everybody. Brock Hewitt definitely going deep, one on one. Jerome Payton. Tremendous concentration and catch. Great hands. 47 yard bomb hauled in by Jerome Payton. And now Ewart's going to check at the line. Desisure, wide right. Fake handoff to Shaw. Rolling out as Ewart, and the flags fly. 6.55 left in the ballgame, and the Huskies leading 29 3, looking to post another one on the board. They're deep in Aztec territory. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Five yards. And those linemen, Sonny, as you mentioned, got a little itchy that time. Well, well start up front. They, they're playing a lot of guys, Kevin. You know, that time they've got Chad Ward on this side, Elliot Silvers. One of the strengths of the uh, offensive team, uh, the Huskies, is their line. Brad Hutt, Chad Ward, a redshirt freshman. Six true freshmen on this squad also, Kevin. So they've got a lot of people out there. Fred Coleman and Andre Desichur are the tandem off to the right side. Reggie Davis, the H back, lined up on the left side. Maury Shaw is the lone back. Here's the hand of Maurice. Reese. He just snuggles that ball close to his chest and ramrods ahead to about the 17 yard line. 
Huskies will take their time now with six little over six minutes to go in the ball game. Run that 25 second clock down to about two and snap the football. See if Marie Shy has an opportunity to make amends on that last fumble being so close to the goal line on one play then coming back to the next play and coughing it up. You want to try and make a positive out of this and I'm sure he's going to be aiming for the end zone. Shot at that point had been averaging just under seven yards a carry. He picked up five there. Second now and ten yards to go for the Huskies. Here's the handoff shot right side. Diagonal hard cut. Brings it back up inside and rolls ahead to the 12 yard line before he's hauled down. Looked like McChristian able to get a hand on him to slow him down a little bit on the outside. Haven't had a lot of plays been successful on the outside. Rashawn Sheehy went for one a little bit in the third quarter around the far side, but San Diego State's done an outstanding job of cutting off that part of the game. Joe Tui Pala from Ridgecrest, California, the junior, makes the stop for the Aztecs. They're at Wisconsin next weekend, followed by road games at Air Force and Arizona. What a schedule. Huskies lead 29 3, 5 13, clock ticking. We're in the fourth period. Third and five. Ewan throws left side, caught by Davis, breaks a tackle, and prances into the end zone. Touchdown, dogs. Brock Ewan making everybody happy. Sonny is just mixing the goods. Watch this. Well, this is one kid that the coaching staff wanted to get on the offensive side. Reggie Davis is a tremendous athlete. He'd been mired at the linebacker position, but the coach Lambright and his staff decided to put him at the H back. He's probably the most natural athlete to be there. Junior from Cypress, California. Scores the touchdown. Randy Jones adds the extra point, and the Huskies lead it by a score of 36 to 3 with five minutes remaining in the game from Huskies Stadium in Seattle, Washington. And there's some real dog fans out there. 36 to 3 count. Washington leading San Diego. San Diego State. The Aztecs came in here and well, they were down 17 3 at halftime. Had a couple opportunities that they really they squandered in the first half. And uh, the Huskies added a late insurance touchdown in the second quarter. Then defensively, they broke out of it. Really started to pick up the momentum and the electricity, the enthusiasm, got the crowd back into it, and then the offense took over. Ewart today has been sensational, Sonny. 16 to 26, 313 yards. He has four touchdowns and no interceptions. And here now is the kickoff recovered by the Aztecs at the 26-yard line. And getting knocked down out there was Marty Graham, I believe, the tackle made by Reggie Davis. The number five on the defensive end. Why not score a touchdown and make a tackle on the kickoff. There you go. <laughs> Magic moments. That's what the Huskies hope to enjoy this year. And they've achieved what they hope and that is a road win over BYU and what is going to be apparently a home opening win against San Diego State and a chance to meet the fifth ranked team in the country the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Bumbled handoff. Graham from Smith juggled it but it popped right up in his hands off the turf and then he swarmed over and tackled. Big day Jerome Payton. I'm sure that chant doesn't even bother him now with the day he's had. So it's good to see the athletes we've seen Kevin. Yeah. You know, I know we've said it a million times but Oz Akeem they've kind of gotten away from that Huskies have made adjustments to him. His 313 pass yards, a new career high, and his four touchdowns today tie a career high as well. Here's Smith. Naked bootleg. Wow. <laughs> Hit hard and brought down at the 30 yard line. Man, that was an absolute gorgeous open field tackle. Gary Shavy with the stop. Great hit by Shavy 58. Josh Smith, the first man out there to apply a little pressure on him. Shavy coming off the block and turning back in. Good timing, big hit. I'm sure that Husky bench maybe has said something about, hey, Mike, how was the hit? <laughs> <laughs> Shavy, the senior from Mercer Island. Thirty six to three. The Huskies lead with three thirty three left in the ballgame. Mike Smith. 
Back to throw. He's going to be brought down. The ball raked out of his arms. And they're going to rule apparently an incomplete pass. The arm wasn't coming forward, however. The stop there made by Todd Johnson. He's been on a big special teams hit, an interception, and now the sack on Smith. Let's go down now to Tom Glasgow. Kevin Marcus Sopo will be in on the next offensive series for the Huskies. The freshman quarterback out of Woodenville. Brock Heward's day is done, and what a day it was. So the freshman Sopo getting to play in his second straight game. Well, that's advantageous for the Huskies. Sonny, to see the freshman back up, getting another chance. Here's a long wobbler. This punt fielded by Jarzenka. Jogs out to the left side. Quick burst of speed up the middle, and then is hauled down as they... Work him into the turf at the 45 <laughs> yard line. Little Joe's a tough little dude and uh, that time the San Diego State coverage team actually didn't even get close to a penalty for the first time in the second half. Fearless Joe coming off the field the Huskies on top 36 to 3. Oh, that dog looking forward to the Cornhuskers next weekend. Nebraska today had their troubles with Central Florida 38-24. 238 left in the ball game. Tuya Sosopo, the quarterback. True freshman. He is not a sophomore. True freshman and getting a lot of quality minutes last week and five minutes to, or three minutes to go in this game. And get a few handoffs out there. Jason Harris is going to lean forward for a couple. We've talked a lot about Rashawn Sheehy this afternoon. Uh, obviously, Maury Shaw in that last possession had a number of carries. Jason Harris is a six foot junior from Diamond Bar, California, Bishop Amat High School. And uh, he was impressive last weekend against BYU late in the ball game. You got to have depth, Kevin, and that's what Coach Lambright is. The sanctions really hurt, but they're able to come through and get some quality, quality recruits and kids that can afford to come in as true freshmen and play backup and then see some time in these ball games. Here again is the gift to Harris and he works his way forward dropped just over the line of scrimmage a gain of three last weekend Harris had 12 carries for 50 yards Brock Hewitt picked up his career high 313 yards going primarily to his main man Jerome Payton Jerome scores scores two pay, uh, two career highs today is eight catches as a career high and is 182 yards through the air as a career high as well Ooh, big day for Sean Sheehy he's held the 22 yards and a half but he broke free in the third quarter and got into a rhythm and had some long gainers as well here's Marcus back to throw looking right side into the flat it's hauled in complete pass but a negligible gain you know when they're going to stack it in like San Diego State did to stop that running game of the Huskies it just opens it up for the big time play of guys like Brock Heward and and all the receivers Jerome Payton and Freddie Coleman. Marcus Tuyas is so far in consultation with Bill Diedrich over there the quarterbacking coach. The Huskies turn it over they're unable to convert. And back to one again is Sean O'Loughlin. Sean gets into this one and sends it up the center of the field. It's taken between the hash marks. Faking right, moving left, and then finally getting knocked down is Eric Lewis. And the Aztecs will take over now at the 14 yard line. A 40 yard punt from Mr. O'Loughlin. 26 seconds remaining in the game. The Huskies 36 and the Aztecs 3. Well, next week. Mm -hmm. Hopefully if they finish up this game the Huskies uh, look appear to be injury free from today's ball game going into next week. That's what they'll need to prepare for the big Cornhuskers. Cornhuskers led by the defensive unit and all American defensive end Grant Wistrom along with quarterback Scott Frost. Here's a handoff left side and that will just about do it. Clock ticks down to about 19 seconds left. Marty Graham was the ball carrier. And Todd Johnson in on a tackle. Todd has had a very, very nice second half. He has been omnipresent. He's had some great quality plays, quality time. It's good to see for a guy like that that's been in the program for a number of years. Well, the Huskies get out of this one with a big time victory, 36 to 3, and more importantly, no injuries to this man or any of their key players. The final again.
Huskies 36, San Diego State 3.